program is an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports, the network of the Olympics. Number 12, Roger Staubach is the quarterback and field leader of the Dallas Cowboys, a great all-purpose athlete who can do it all, like here, where he scrambles for needed yardage. But Staubach's abilities are so versatile. He can throw, like here, when he hits Gene Fugit, the tight end, in the end zone for a touchdown. And like here, when he finds his favorite of all targets, number 88, Drew Pierce. That's Roger Staubach. But Mike Livingston, number 10, is the adversary quarterback. He leads the Kansas City Chiefs, characterized by Paul Wick and his coach, as a kind of street-fighting quarterback. Livingston likes to scramble when he has to. And Livingston has learned to throw on the run, like here when he hits Eddie Podolak for a touchdown. And here, well, he's got a new one, a tight end who can go deep, who's young and fast, Walter White, the rookie from Maryland. Tonight, it's the Chiefs against Dallas. 15 seconds there. Stand by the camera. Stand by videotape. Stand by slow mo. Stand by roll videotape this time. And roll tape. Four, three, two, one. Take tape. From Texas Stadium, just outside Dallas, Texas, tonight it's the Dallas Cowboys and the Kansas City Chiefs. The Cowboys locked in a tight divisional race in the National Conference. The Chiefs, a young rebuilding team that has surprised the entire National Football League. And ABC's NFL Monday Night Football is brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. See their new 76s and see why they say the closer you look, the better we look. The standings in the Eastern Division of the National Football Conference reflect the importance of tonight's Monday night NFL game, the Cowboys against the Chiefs. The Cowboys must win in order to stay abreast of Washington and St. Louis, Kansas City, a surprisingly strong football team. These boots were made for walking, and that's what they're going to do right here in Dallas, Texas, when we're along with you. Hello again, everyone. I'm Howard Cosell. Glad to have you back with us for Monday Night Football. Quickly, let's go to the opposition coaches. One of them is famous. The other is a rookie head coach. We'll take him first. Paul Wiggin, Kansas City Chief. He was a great player under Paul Brown. Played with the Browns in their glory years for 11 seasons. Became an assistant defensive coordinator for Dick Nolan at San Francisco. Nolan called him the best assistant coach I've ever seen took over the Chiefs when only Scram had been before him. Took over a team which he says knew how to play football. Gave credit to Hank Scram, and I'm glad he did that. As I said, an outspoken man. But a man who can put things together when things seem at their worst. He proved it. The Chiefs lost their first three. Quickly rebounded, won the next three, then lost to Tuffy a week ago to Houston. The opposition coach you all know about. One of the greatest, one of the most innovative ever in the history of the National Football League, Tom Landry. This year he's brought back the shotgun. Starback uses it effectively. Wigan told me today that he's had to spend half the week just preparing his defenses for the shotgun formation. Tom Landry, the third winningest coach among all active coaches with 121 career victories. So that's the backdrop in terms of leadership. Let's go to spanking. Well, Univac, I'm glad that you did mention Paul Wiggins because Wiggins, Paul, it's yes, you've I, made him plural. Well, he has a family, uh, <laughs> Howard, and uh, I, I, although he's a great coach, he's also a dirty ball player. He was a dirty ball player. He spat on me out there, folks, and that's dirty. So his ball clubs are going to be a tough type of ball club, and I know they're going to be tough out there tonight. Uh, unfortunately, he's had some problems on their defensive line. He's lost three of their top uh, uh, great uh, linemen, so they're going to have to go with some substitutes in there. And, Consequently, they're very shallow, and listen to this. If they lose two or three of them tonight, they may, you may first very possibly be seeing the first one six five in football. That's 12 men. 
They're entitled, Howard, to have <laughs> that many ball players. Let's go to Gifford. Yeah, they might need it. How about that? Cowboy boots and a Tiffany watch. <laughs> <laughs> it belongs somehow in Dallas. We're looking forward to a good football game. In my estimation, the Dallas Cowboys are a much stronger football team, but there's something about the Kansas City Chiefs that are very special. They are rebuilding under a very fine young head football coach, as Howard mentioned, in Paul Wigan. We have already taken a look at Mike Livingston, who returns to where he was born here in Dallas, played his college football at SMU, and finally has taken over from Lenny Dawson after seven years as a backup man. We talked about Roger Staubach. Roger Staubach, one of the great quarterbacks in pro football today. In my estimation, though, there are two players we'll be watching a great deal of tonight, and that is number 63 for the Kansas City Chiefs, their fine middle linebacker, Willie Lanier. Willie Lanier was going to quit earlier this year. Paul Wigan talked him out of it, and he has come back, and while he's not playing behind the caliber of defensive linemen that his counterpart, Leroy Jordan, is playing behind, nevertheless, he still is one of the premier middle linebackers in football today. Leroy Jordan is a very special individual. He only goes about 212 pounds, but he's been backing up the Cowboys line at the middle for 13 years. An All-American out of Alabama, he still is kind of special, and he's helping a lot of youngsters on this Dallas Cowboy team. They have 12 rookies, more than any other contender. A quick look at Mike Livingston. Played at SMU nine years ago, has been the backup man to Lenny Dawson, waiting for a shot, and this year he got it. He was their opening quarterback, and he was the quarterback in their big win over Oakland, a team that they must try and stay close to if they're going to have any shot in their Western Division of the AFC. The Kansas City Chiefs and the Dallas Cowboys live from Dallas, Texas, where we'll return with the kickoff in just a moment. The American worker. Some people have forgotten the craftsmanship he brings to his job. Some say he's not as important as he used to be. Well, to that, we politely answer, bunk. At Zenith, Americans like these produce the color TV that service technicians named more than any other as the one that needs fewest repairs. American workers, Zenith workers, they make sure the quality goes in before the name goes on. Give you watch a new twist. Twist of flex. Give yourself a new feeling. Twist of flex. With Fidel on your wrist. Twist of flex. It's the one that keeps giving. Twist of flex. Give you watch a new twist. Give you watch a new twist of flex. Twist of Flex watch bands only by Spidel. Giving comfort, beauty, flexibility in over a hundred great styles. You're the pro, George. I need some new tires. What kind should I get? You're holding the answer in your hands. <laughs> X-Fly tires? Turn it around, Frank. Dunlop. Dunlop tires, of course. Sure, Dunlop's one of the largest tire manufacturers in the world. That means a lot of people are putting a lot of trust in Dunlop on the road. When you want to get more out of your drive, see a pro. That's me. See your Dunlop pro. If you like us on the fairway, you'll love us on the freeway. This is a special message for the NFL's teenage fans, boys and girls between the ages of 14 and 18 who like a challenge. It's an essay contest as part of our nation's bicentennial celebration. Just present your thoughts in 500 to 750 words on the topic, the NFL's role in American history. The first prize is a $10,000 college scholarship, plus a trip to the Super Bowl in Miami next January, and special recognition in Pro Football's Hall of Fame. The deadline is November the 15th, 1975. A near capacity crowd at Texas Stadium, just outside of Dallas, Texas. It's the Dallas Cowboys and the Kansas City Chiefs. Balloons, the festive air that seems to accompany us wherever we go on Monday Night Football as we look now at Roger Staubach, one of the premier quarterbacks in all of football. The Cowboys need a win tonight to stay abreast of the Washington Redskins and the St. Louis Cardinals. There is Staubach's counterpart, number 10, Mike Livingston. Played high school football here, went on to greatness at SMU, and has been in the wings for so long, waiting for Lenny Dawson to either retire, give up the ghost or whatever, but nevertheless, Lenny Dawson's still on the roster. But tonight, it'll be Mike Livingston who will open. This is the stadium, Texas Stadium, which according to Dandy Dunn was typically Texan. He said they built it, but they never finished it. They left a hole in it. They're mad for the Cowboys down here, sometimes beyond a reason. 
The receivers, number 26 is Preston Pearson. Number 21 is Duck Dennison. Jan Stenerud will kick off for Kansas City. Jan Stenerud having a great year in the field goal department. Seven straight coming into tonight. He riffles it long and high. A typical Stenerud kick will be taken by Preston Pearson at the goal line. Pearson finds a big hole. Pearson out over the 30 to the 33-yard line, hit there by Tim Carney. Even before you were set, uh, uh, set up, all right, go ahead, Frank. Set up the, the Dallas offensive back. Howard, there's Roger Starback. We mentioned him. He will be in there with setbacks. Number 26, Preston Pearson. Robert Newhouse is number 44. The wide receivers, number 88. He's the best of the Cowboy receivers, Drew Pearson. The tight ends will alternate between Billy Joe Dupree, number 89, James Dugan, number 84. The other wide receiver, Golden Richards, 83. Cowboys move from their own 32. Out of the eye formation, the quick toss is to Pearson over the right side. Pearson is met after a yard pickup by middle linebacker Willie Lanier. The offensive line, it's a good one. There's one rookie in there, Herbert Scott. There's only one rookie starting for the Cowboys, but the rest of them are veterans. Ralph Neely at one tackle, Rayfield right the other. The guards are Herbert Scott, he's the rookie, number 68, Blaine Nye, number 61, the center, John Fitzgerald. The number one offensive team, the Dallas Cowboys in the National Football Conference. They're third in rushing, third in passing, overall number one. Gain of one yard by Pearson. Second down and nine, the ball at the 33. Pearson the call again. And Pearson gets two yards this time out to the 35. Of course, here's the uh, Chiefs front four, as we talked about. It's kind of a makeshift line. John Matusa, of course, is a big giant. Buck Buchanan's been around a long time. Tommy, Tommy Keating, number 74, is just activated again. He's playing that right tackle, and Bob Maddock makes up that right end. And they're a makeshift line, but they're a veteran ball club. They, can know, they know what to do. They handle themselves pretty well. That's crazy. Eddie Podolak played one of the greatest individual games within memory some years back against Miami. A superb all-purpose football player. Still, third and seven. The shotgun offense. Stall back deep. Pearson is in there. Charles Young is in there. There are the good receivers. Stall back. Incomplete to Charles Young. Fourth down. Dallas will punt. Frank. Kansas City was deeply concerned with Dallas in the early going, especially the first series of plays. They're concerned about, or were concerned about Dallas striking quickly, getting the lead, so Kansas City would have to play catch-up football, and then Dallas could unleash its front four. Kansas City feels if they can get the early lead, they'll, they'll be in this game to stick, and they think they've got a good chance to win it under Wiggins. Mitch Hoops, an eighth-round draft pick, deep, three receivers, Eddie Podolak, Charles Thomas, Kerry Reardon. Hoops, a wobbly kick. Reardon will take it on his own, 27. And getting away from one tackler, back out to the 30-yard line. Randy White was down there to make the stop, the All-American. And now, for the Kansas City Chiefs, we've told you about Mike Livingston. He opens the quarterback. He's number 10. Ed Podolak is in there, ahead of Woody Green. Woody Green with a sore ankle. Podolak is 14. MacArthur Lane, number 42, is a fullback. The wide receivers, Larry Brunson, 83. Barry Pearson, number 85. Billy Masters, number 84, is in there. Walter White will alternate with him. White is number 88. Two fine tight ends. First and 10 for Kansas City from their own 30-yard line. And a bobble on the very first snap for Kansas City. Players are being untangled. And Kansas City, back on the football, Mike Livingston able to recover their offensive line. They've had a few problems there, but they are beginning to firm up. Jack Rudney's at center. Rocky Raisley is the 15th left guard the Kansas City Chiefs have used this year. He's number 66. Tom Condon, the other guard, number 65. The tackles are Nicholson, number 70, and Charlie Getty, number 77. Second down and nine. Ball at the 32-yard line. Odalak with a big hole, oh, he drops the football. Dallas recovers, Eddie Podolak. All right, it's early in the game and Kansas City has had the big mistake already that they especially didn't want to get in the early going. Let's have another look at this. And off to Podolak, 
the hole is big. He bursts through despite that makeshift offensive line. Gift. Two players involved in that tackle. Harvey Martin, number 79, was not expected to start. A surprise starter was number 31, Vinnie Barnes. He was in there. The actual recovery, however, made by number 43, Cliff Harris, first and 10 for Dallas, the 44-yard line of Kansas City. The setbacks change a lot for Dallas. Now they're 26 Pearson, 44 Newhouse. Starback with a deep drop and looking. Goes out complete to Robert Newhouse. Oh. Newhouse running into Kansas City Chiefs after a gain of five or six inside the 40. Well, the Kansas City Chiefs linebackers are two of three veterans. Ken Avery is a veteran, too, out of New York by way of Cincinnati. Willie Lanier out of Morgan State, one of the most famous ones in the game, and Jim Lynch out of Notre Dame. Lanier, Lynch, and then Bobby Bell with a triumvirate who sparked the Kansas City Chiefs to their Super Bowl victory. There are the defensive backs, 15, Reardon, 18, Thomas, one, LeBest, Kearney, very good. Mike Sensible out of Ohio State. Second down and five, the ball at the 39 for Kansas City. Doug Dennison, number 21, is now a setback. Here he comes. Good blocking, big hole, and look out. Reardon is the last man that can stop Dennison. He trips him up. Dennison down to the 10-yard line. Great blocking by the offensive line of the Cowboys. Doug Dennison, a second-year man whom we watched last year in Philadelphia as a rookie. And Frank, for the viewers out there, if you've noticed the front four of Kansas City, they, both tackles are playing way inside, which means that they can't give any pursuit to the outside, making this outside run real good because there's no pursuit. They cut that pursuit off, and there's nobody in the inside that's going to help out there. So he's, he's got a real shot if they keep going to the outside. Let's see if they bring those defensive tackles out a little bit more. Now they have. They first, widen them out. First down, the ball just short of the 10-yard line. Justin <laughs> Pearson and... Struggling down to the one-yard line. Willie Lanier being dragged by Pearson. As Paul Wigan looks on, Eddie Podolak fumbled at the 44-yard line. Dallas in three quick plays are threatening the second down, the ball just short of the one-yard line. Howard, they, excuse me, Frank, they, they widened the tackles and they went inside that time. It's a good play. Yeah, they're cleaning out the Kansas City defensive line at the moment. The very thing Kansas City most feared, a quick burst by Dallas. The stacked backfield. Charles Young is in there, number 30. Newhouse gets the call. Newhouse very close to the score. Lunging forward. And Newhouse is short of the touchdown. It'll be third down, less than a yard. The young Kansas City coach, Paul Wigan. His counterpart, Tom Landry, 16 years in the National Football League. The only coach the Cowboys have ever had. And the first down can be made. <laughs> that much. Our referee tonight, Pat Haggerty, our umpire Al Conway, our head linesman Walt Peters, our line judge Bob Beeks, the back judge is Jim Poole, the field judge Pat Millett. Starback on a third down and inches. The ball inside the one. 11.32 remaining in this first quarter from Dallas, Texas. Ball was bobbled and I believe Kansas City has it. There's the other break. Dennison fumbled the ball. Kansas City recovers. A reminder of a year ago, and we replayed it for you last week in Philadelphia. Doug Dennison out of Cootstown State, apparently about to go in for a touchdown. Fumble. Joe Bird Lavender, number 30 on the Eagles, took it all the way for a touchdown, 96 yards. Now Dennison about to go in again. Fumble. Difficult circumstances for the young man. And got it again. Starback the bobbled the ball, him. never got it. Emmett Thomas made the recovery for Kansas City. Emma Thomas, who is always around the football for the Chiefs. Kansas City starting in a deep hole at their own two-yard line. MacArthur Lane gets the call, hopefully, to give Mike Livingston breathing room. He I'd like to, to the five. Frank, I'd like to look at that play again because it establishes that this time it was not young Dennison's fall at all. Watch this. Starback with the ball. Bobbles it in midair. Well, he actually kind of tossed it to him. Almost a completion. Yes. But in any event, only partially at best, or at worst, Dennison's fault. Second down and seven. Livingston can breathe just a little at his own five. Three, 
This time is Kornilak, and he's nailed at the line of scrimmage, but you saw him covering up that football, as running backs are prone to do once they have fumbled. Bill Gregory, number 77, Jet Throw Pew, were in on the stop. Frank mentioned earlier they've had 15 guards in that offensive line under Joe Spencer, the offensive line coach who coached the Jets in 1968. He's a good coach. But recently, during the season, they've had four. Ed Buddy, the great veteran, out for the year. Injured reserve, knee. Randy Beisler, acquired from San Francisco, out for the year. Neck. Roger Bernhardt, acquired from the Jets, out. And now Rocky Razor. Third down and seven. But Arthur Lane held far short of the first down. Moves out to the 13. It'll be fourth down. It'll be a pressure punt for Kansas City's Gerald Wilson. The point is, Frank, that Wigan and Spencer have been miracle men in keeping an offense going with that kind of juxtaposition of offensive line personnel. And if you're going to have a putter kicking from the end zone, it may as well be Gerald Wilson. And he just gets it off. A bad snap. He had trouble handling it. It'll be short. Dallas will have great field position once more. 26-yard punt. Kansas City in trouble again. A flag is down. We'll be back. On this test track, you're watching two Mercedes 280 sedans and two 1976 Ford Granadas. Granada is a car of about the same size and shape as the Mercedes. It is also a car designed for the quality of riding comfort American drivers have come to demand. But the American driver is demanding a modest base sticker price as well. Ford Granada, under $4,000, excluding taxes, title, and destination charges. See your local Ford dealer. Here's Joe DiMaggio. Particular about your coffee? You need Mr. Coffee, the greatest coffee brewer ever. A precision coffee brewing system that makes a perfect pot of coffee every time. The best I've ever tasted. Our filter? Your coffee. Mr. Coffee does the rest. Faster than instant, better than fresh perked. Whatever brand you use, Mr. Coffee brews it best. Mr. Coffee. The greatest coffee brewing system ever. Next Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports, you'll see the motorcycle race of champions, then Olga Corbett in the World Cup of Gymnastics, and the World Target Diving Championship here on ABC. Typical Dallas Lovely. Here, here. Well, she may be a little more than typical. They have some beauties here in Dallas, and Dallas has a beautiful field position. Time has passed you by, Frank. <laughs> First and ten, the Cowboys on the Chiefs' 33-yard line. The toss to Pearson. Pearson waiting for the blocks to develop, and they do not happen. A flag flies as Pearson gets down to the 30-yard line. Jim Lynch there to make the stop. There was a penalty on the punt of Gerald Wilson, an ineligible Chief downfield, you just saw the holding penalty assessed now against Dallas. Here is the bad snap. Wilson handled the ball very carefully. He's in his own end zone, had to hurry the ball. It was almost blocked. He did get it off, just barely. There was an ineligible Chief downfield. Naturally, uh, following a 26-yard punt, the Cowboys declined the penalty, and they have just been assessed 10 yards of their own. They have a first down and 20, the ball at the Kansas City Chiefs 43-yard line as Lenny Dawson, the aging quarterback of the Chiefs, looks on. Pearson on the draw. Pearson spins away from John Matuzak. Picks up three yards. Make it four. It'll be second down and 16. I'll tell you, the biggest guy I've seen in pro football for a long, long time, other than Too Tall Jones, is John Matusak right there, number 79. Now, he's very aggressive right now. Good job. He gets rid of his blocker, comes back in. The only thing John can't do real well yet is tackle. <laughs> the only. First to tackle, Howard, he'll be all right. He's learning a new position. He used to play inside. He's giving it his all, though, at least Coach Wiggins says. The ball at the 39, second down. Shotgun position. For the Cowboys, there's a screen. Newhouse holds on to the ball. Blockers in front. Newhouse down the sidelines. Getting very close to the original line of scrimmage. Back to the 34. It'll be third down and 11. Tom Keating moved over there from defensive tackle for Kansas City, who's had trouble in that offensive, rather defensive line. Their 
best defensive man, Wilbur Young, who leads the team in quarterback sacks, is out. out. He will not play tonight. John Lohmeyer will not play. Wilbur Young might possibly see action, but we do not anticipate that. I don't know how Wigan has done it. But Buchanan is in there, number 86, but he has a sore foot. So the Cowboys, with 8.03 remaining in the first quarter. No score. They have a third down and 11. A ball at the 34. Sawback. Hits Charles Young, short of the first down. Down to the 27-yard line, a gain of seven. Alex, I simply don't understand why in the pro league we see that so often. We see the man go down short of first down yardage to receive the pass on the third down play. That's Jethro Pugh, our old friend. What a combination, Jethro Pugh and Bob Lilly. Of course, Bob's being enshrined in, in the state tonight, but what a combination they were, Howard, to watch him play. A 42-yard field goal attempt. They'll never make it, Frank. Howard, they'll never make it. Fritz probably remembering last week's field goal attempt of 38 yards against Washington that could have won that game. This one's blocked. Picked off. Picked off there by Don Martin, I believe, blocked it. And Kerry Reardon came up with it for Kansas City. So two big breaks have turned Dallas back. Kansas City will have a first and 10, their own 22-yard line. Once in a while, an old car like this still pulls into an Exxon station. When it does, it brings back memories. For instance, when this old friend came by back in 1934, it was probably to try the new gasoline Exxon was introducing that year. It was blended according to the season, and it helped cars get started easier and warm up faster. Or it may have been for Exxon's new motor oil, but helped engines last a little longer. Down through the years, Exxon kept coming up with other new ideas as a result of their advanced product quality research. Today, Exxon retailers are still there to serve you, and they're still backed by dependable products from Exxon Research for your important mind. draped around Texas Stadium, where a few moments ago, Kansas City averted another score. They blocked a 42-yard field goal attempt of Tony Fritz. Here comes MacArthur Lane, and that's Lane. Lane powers over the left side, picks up six yards. We have now been told it was Buck Buchanan who blocked that field goal. MacArthur Lane, of course, acquired by way of trade from the St. Louis Cardinals, and he's done a good job. He got in the past two games. He is a superb blocker, as veteran NFL fans know, and still a powerhouse runner. He replaced Cleopas Miller, who shone well a year ago as a runner, but they felt he couldn't do the job blocking. The ball at the 26. Second down and six. Another big hole for Podolak, and Podolak out close to the 40-yard line. They'll mark it at the 39, first down, Kansas City. And that was the identical play with which Podolak carried earlier and fumbled the football. Dallas fumbled themselves after they had moved to the one-yard line. 6-12 left to go in the first quarter. Putting it in perspective, Dallas has had two big opportunities. One, a, mist a mistake on a handoff from Dawson to Dennison resulted in a fumble inside the Chiefs' five. The other, they got started in great field position in Chiefs' territory, couldn't put it together, had a place kick attempt block. On first down, Livingston going to the air. The attempt is to Larry Brunson. Buck Buchanan, one of the great heroes of the 1970 Super Bowl victory over the Minnesota Vikings. That's when Buck and Curly Culp, now with Houston, played an odd man front over Mick Tingleha, 53 on Minnesota, the smallest center. This is the man who blocked the field goal a few seconds ago. That day, they made life unbearable for Mick and unbearable for Joe Captain, the quarterback of the Vikes. Second down, the ball at the 39-yard line of Kansas City. Livingston again, looking for the screen man, finds MacArthur Lane. Lane, with good blocking out front, gets out to the, close to the 45-yard line. Leroy Jordan, number 55, coming over from his middle linebacking position. 
Gain of five, it'll be third down and five. Ball marked at the 44. No score. Texas Stadium, it holds 65,100. What's in the middle, that gift? Well, that lets in some of the beautiful air that we've had today. Why didn't they finish it? Where are no, you? I don't know. <laughs> Meredith said they ran out of money or something, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> On third down, which is hard to believe. Hodlak, inside handoff. Hodlak has the first down. That's where Podolak excels as a runner. He doesn't have the speed, apparently, to be a really great runner. Yet abruptly, he can accelerate. Watch this again. He is supposedly reasonably slow-footed. But watch this. The instant the opening, he's through. And then he's powerful. He is not easy to bring down. Podolak filling in tonight for the injured Woody Green. There's a good look at one of the skiing wonders of the world. Frank, he's what we call a garbage can runner. He doesn't look like he's doing anything out there. He's much like Paul Horning. He gets the job done. And Get Iowa up. Hawkeye. That's right. Like the great. On first down from Dallas's 45-yard line. Livingston with a month to throw the ball. Now he attracts a crowd, and Podolak does not hang on. D.D. Lewis went for the interception. And a pass that I'm sure that Ed Podolak thought that he could have handled. Livingston with a lot of time, and then all of a sudden the protection collapsed, and well, Ed Jones think, was in there. Right. It's going to collapse when you got this guy coming at the quarterback. That's too tall, Jones. <laughs> he, gets, he gets up again. He's scrambling still. Now he moves in. He jumps up. He's 12 foot, three and a half inches when he jumps up on his heels. Second down, Kansas City. Just short of the 45-yard line of the Dallas Cowboys. 4.52 remaining in the first quarter. This is Ed Podolak. Podolak shoots out for a gain of three. Bill Gregory made the stop. Paul Wigan has to be delighted with what has happened thus far in the sense that the Cowboys are not on the scoreboard with He still has a flat top. Points. He still wears a flat top, Frank. He's really square. You know that, don't you? Now, he's a block him and, uh, Work for Dick Nolan, you gotta wear it that way. He learned early. And he's Paul a, Brown. He's a weedy eater. You can tell that. Third down and six. Ball up to 41 of the Cowboys. Livingston. And this time Ed Jones comes in and blocks the football, knocking it back almost in the face of Mike Livingston. <laughs> Ed Jones, who is not 12 feet, as Alex mentioned, but he is 6'9 and 260. Let's watch him again. Well, this guy, he really, he really does a good job on that tackle. He moves to the outside pretty quick. He has good quick moves. His only big problem I see so far as a young ball player is that he takes too many wide steps, too long steps. He's got to shorten his steps up a little bit. He can really be much quicker if he does that. And of course, you know he's got the power and the strength, so he's going to be a great one. Darrell Wilson, the Cowboys have 10 men on the line of scrimmage. Single safety, Golden Richards. And they almost got to this one. Wilson angling for the sidelines. He got it. That was some kick. What a beauty. Wilson, who has been averaging 43 yards of punt coming into tonight's game, has put it out of bounds at the Cowboys' four-yard line. We'll be back. Why are you calling all those other people? When just one call to United from you or your travel agent get your flight, rental car, and now even your hotel room at Holiday Inn, Ramada, Hyatt, Howard Johnson's, Sheridan, or Western uh, International. One call to United did it all. Flight, rental car, hotel. The friendly skies of your land. So why are you calling all those other people? United Airlines. I've practiced and practiced this course. I remember uh, every turn, every drop. You gotta go all out at the Olympic Games. Fear doesn't enter your mind, ever. Because it causes mistakes, or worse. Number 11, in place. This is it, going all out. It's the only way when just one can be best. They know that at the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company, because you judge the quality of their brewing skill every time you open a Schlitz.
Signs in Texas Stadium. Of course, spelling, Frank. Starring has two R's. <laughs> First, raz razzing our colleague, Howard Cosell. <laughs> Howard got on Robert Newhouse's case up a little bit in Detroit a few weeks ago. They take umbrage to down here in Texas for things like that. I never did. I said that he was not a Calvin Hill, and he is not. Well, in any event, they misunderstood what Howard said here in Dallas because they have just been friendly. <laughs> Semi. First and ten for Dallas. They move from their own four. Newhouse. Upended right at the line of scrimmage. That's not Robert Newhouse. Oh, now that is wicked. Just back to the line of scrimmage. Newhouse maybe picked up a half a yard. Doug Dennison comes in, number 21. The Cowboys juggling their offensive setbacks. Wide receivers, Drew Pearson, bottom of your screen now. Dennison goes back into the eye. Second down and nine. Newhouse. Newhouse moving out over the nine yard line, hit there by Willie Lanier in his ninth year out of Morgan State. Willie Lanier is not working behind one of the best defensive lines. A lot of injuries for the Kansas City Chiefs. I told you, Willie Young is out, Lohmeyer is out, Buck Buchanan is playing hurt tonight. And that really makes it tough on a middle linebacker. Third down and five. The ball just short of the 10. No score. 2.49 remaining in the first quarter. Dallas had two golden opportunities. They had a field goal block. They fumbled the ball at the one yard line of the Kansas City Chiefs. Too much, too much time. And Dallas, juggling personnel, juggling formations, have used up too much time. Ball will be moved back. And there is the capacity crowd. There were some 10,000 seats available. And there is a growing restiveness in the crowd, Frank. Earlier, the crowd booed the Cowboys with an immediacy that was alarming in the light of their defense of their heroes throughout the recent weeks. The myriad moods of America's sports fans. Third down. Young gets the draw call out to just over the 10 yard line. It'll be fourth down. Bob Maddox, number 75, who has moved out from tackle and playing defensive end now for Kansas City, made the stop. Clock ticking away. Inside three minutes, still no score. Wilbur Young, a huge, huge man, number 99. What a great year he was having. He yep. led the Chiefs in sacks, 10 individually. The best player on the defensive front four without question. Not seriously injured, but sore enough that he is that he cannot be in there tonight. This is Mitch Hoops. The Chiefs with their three deep men. Podolak at his 43-yard line. And Podolak inside the 35-yard line to the 33, hit there by Calvin Peterson. Hit Podolak. Tremendous football player, was a quarterback at Iowa, a wide receiver. Done a whole bunch of things. Howard mentioned that memorable game back in 71 against Miami. He had 350 yards of offense that particular day. And he did it in a variety of ways. 85 rushing, 110 receiving, 155 on kick returns. So what looked like was going to be a runaway with the Cowboys has turned around somewhat. The Chiefs now good field position of their own. 32-yard line of the Cowboys, first and 10. MacArthur Lane bobbles it, catches it on the bounce. Got a lucky up bounce. Up there quickly was Mark Washington, number 46, the left cornerback. He really had a lucky bounce there. Could have blown the whole thing as it is. They're not in good position now. Well, he doesn't seem to be handing off real well to those back for some reason or another. He's sitting them kind of low on the belt and uh, not up where they could handle it. And that's the second time we've seen it right now. You got to hit him a little low on the belt, Howard. Make him go. Oh. Then you know they have the ball. When'd you learn that? <laughs> second down and 17. The ball at the 39 of the Cowboys. Odlak with the play action fake. Livingston sprinting for the out of bounds, also safety as Big Ed Jones was in pursuit. 
Hey, the ankle of Harvey Martin, big number 79, now taped. Obviously, he sprained it. No, I think that's normal. <laughs> <laughs> he was in there earlier and tried to go. Obviously, has re-injured that ankle. The ankle he damaged against Washington last week. Frank, when Coach Wigan characterized Livingston today as a street fight, a brawler type of quarterback, he meant he was talking about the young man's willingness to scramble and about the absence of precision. He's not the kind of passer who takes you apart like a Bob Greasy does. He has the pass situation on third down and 11. And a lot of time. Going deep in the end zone. Cliff Harris back there defending against Larry Brunson. And Cliff Harris, truly a fine defensive safety, just did get back. One of time. the very best, Giff. They had the right man back there. We'll look at it in replay. Elected the most valuable of all the Cowboys a year ago. His development has been simply outstanding. And here's the speedster, Larry Brunson. Now watch Harris. Up he goes. Almost comes down with it. It's also one of the fine hitters. Golden Richards gave him a yellow helmet with a siren and a red light on it for practice sessions. He says, I want to know where he is when I'm out there. Well, Golden might give him anything. Let's you know, see what Jan can do with this, Alex. 51 yard no attempt. Way. No He's way, made Mike. seven of his last seven. There's no it way in the world. Plenty of distance. It is. No good. way. <laughs> Harris was right. No way. Kansas City on the scoreboard first with a 51 yard field goal by Jan Stinnerud. And he has made his last eight attempts. Folks, don't forget this Saturday, ABC Sports brings you another outstanding day of NCAA Regional College football. Harvard, losing to Princeton last Saturday, travels to Brown in a traditional Ivy League battle at 1 Eastern time. Colorado beats Kansas, fresh from their stunning 23-3 victory over the Sooners of Oklahoma in a Big 8 grudge match at 1.30 Eastern and 12.30 Central time. Chuck Jordan's Auburn Tigers take on the Georgia Bulldogs in a test of SE strength at 1.30 Eastern Time, 12.30 Central. Georgia upset Florida in a re regional battle this past Saturday. Last season's NCAA Coach of the Year, Grant Teft, and his Baylor Bears tangled with Texas Tech, the alma mater of E.J. Holler being honored here tonight. And their new coach, Steve Sloan, at 12.30 Central Time. More from the Giffra later. He will amplify. Uh, regional college football check your local listing for the telecast in your area Jan Stinnerud who just hit from 51 yards out riffles another one Preston Pearson takes it in his own end zone Pearson directing traffic and Pearson with a fine return what 37 a yards after the 35 yard line Mike Sensabaugh made the stop for Kansas City what a nifty runner Frank the Fans, I think, have been sated with his history. Finally, in a late cut by Pittsburgh, fine player that he is, being picked up by Dallas. The only one of the 43 players on the Dallas squad not homegrown, acquired elsewhere. A fine receiver as well as a nifty runner. First and 10 for Dallas. Surprisingly, they're trailing the Kansas City Chiefs. They had two big breaks in the first quarter. A four punt and a, a fumble by Podolak. They return the fumble at the one-yard line of Kansas City. Pass goes to Gene Fugit. I want to tell you something. Jim Kearney, the strong safety and a fine one, number 46, is angry with himself. He had that play read and got there a little late. He might have picked that off and gone for the TD. Fugit picks up eight yards. It'll be second down and two. The ball at the 43-yard line. Fugit out of the college that uh, Alex most wanted to go to, Amherst. They wouldn't let him in. Seconds ticking away, five seconds remaining in the first quarter. Kansas City out in front, three to nothing. Dennison with the call in a big hole. He has the first down up to the 47-yard line. Doug Dennison upset there by Kerry Reardon. That young Reardon who has succeeded Jimmy Marsalis, number 40 at cornerback, is a hitter, as you just saw. So Jan Stinnerud has put Kansas City ahead, three to nothing on a 51-yarder. Owen. After Homelite developed a chainsaw for $109.95, we tried to ruin it by doing things you shouldn't do. Because as America's largest maker of professional chainsaws, Homelite has a reputation to protect. And we're not about to let a saw out that can't stand up. 
So while the Home Light XL may be inexpensive, it's not cheap. Home Light for the pro and the man who wants to cut like one. And now the 109.95 Home Light is just 99.99. The engine room crew says it gets pretty hot down here. I'll say. But they yeah. want to switch from their aerosol deodorants. Now, women have lots of alternatives. Thanks of all the luck. But what can a man use for the kind of protection he needs? Here's what. Old Spice stick deodorant and roll on any perspirant. Both designed for men to provide man-sized protection against odor or wetness. They go on direct and they have that great masculine Old Spice oh, fragrance. Oh. Da -dum, ba -ba -da -da. Old Spice stick and new Old Spice roll-on. Designed for men. I'm Will Lanier of the Kansas City Chiefs. Every player hopes that someday he'll be part of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I know I do. But there's something here for everyone, young and old, male and female. They enshrine many area, great movies, treasured relics of the past. Why don't you plan a visit next time you're in the area? The Pro Football Hall of Fame is located in Canton, Ohio, right off Interstate 77. 77, wasn't that Red Grange's number? The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. John Stenerud and Gerald Wilson, they put the foot to the Kansas City Chiefs. Stenerud has had a remarkable year, been around seemingly forever. He's hit eight in a row now, 47, 46, 45, 41, and now 51 to put the Chiefs ahead tonight, three to nothing. He's never made a tackle in his life, Frank. He's a good skier. On first down for the Cowboys. Out to Fuga. This time he bobbles it. Ken Avery moving over from his defensive left linebacking position. Fuga just took his eyes off the ball. Further down field. Second down and ten. Further downfield, Giff. Drew Pearson appeared to be all alone, but Roger seemed set upon throwing to the tight end. Do you like that pop, little girl? I think Pearson will probably come back and have a word with Roger because you mentioned how he was all alone. Fuga, of course, was open. But Fugit dropped the ball back into the same formation. Pearson, the top of your screen, on second down and 10. Ball at the Cowboys, 47-yard line. Ball back. Gets out of the traffic and races into Kansas City territory at the 46-yard line. A gain of seven. Bob Maddox was in there on Roger Staubach at uh, number 75. We thought he had him. John Matuzak was also there. Well, he had quite a bit of time, though, uh, Frank. And, of course, now it collapses on him. But he had a little time to throw the ball. There's Maddox missing. Here's what I don't like to see anymore. These quarterbacks are getting injured so much right now. Lions have lost both their quarterbacks. And it's going to be a real dilemma in the National Football League. Or She's going to be the next quarterback that we just saw. Third down and three. The ball inside the 46-yard line of Kansas City. Get up, Starback firing complete to Drew Pearson. Now Nifty that, footwork on the part of the six foot, 180 pounder out of Tulsa. Right, and a great pass by Roger. That's a precision play. That's surgical. Pearson had, of course, the big year last year for Dallas, 62 receptions. And leading Dallas again this year, coming into tonight's play, had 30 receptions. That was second in the National Conference. He threw that ball where it couldn't be intercepted, as you noted, Alex. Yes, I did notice Body that. of the receiver protecting the ball, and yet the ball thrown just in back. And yet parallel to whatever he was doing. The ball of the 29 of Kansas City. Inside handoff to Newhouse. Gets away from a couple of tacklers. Cuts back. Let's go all the way. Newhouse. Down to the 15-yard line. Emmett Thomas finally takes him out of bounds. Oh, how the fans have been waiting for that. And look at them all look up at our booth. As I said, this is about the fact that when we had the Detroit-Dallas game, I told Frank that Newhouse at first was not a good runner. I amended it by saying, Frank, he's a good enough runner. And I quote exactly from the transcript, there's no way he's another Calvin Hill. He is not an exceptional runner. Now, that's telling it like you think it is. But Bobby just had a good run. An exceptional run. <laughs> First and 10 at the 15 as the awesome Cowboys move inside. That's what started it all. Frank Gifford characterized the Cowboys as awesome. 
and they went on to lose two of their next four games, including giving Green Bay its only victory of the year. And a win tonight, and they'll be tied for the division lead in the National Conference. Which doesn't Eastern speak division. well for the strength of the league, does it? <laughs> well, since we're in Dallas, let's call them awesome so we can get out of here after the game. Preston Pearson carried the ball for a gain of two. It'll be second down and eight. Ball at the 13-yard line. Starback quieting the crowd. Doug Dennison is in there now. He's 21. He adjusts into the eye. Newhouse, the call again. A big hole. Up and in hard. Thank heavens he didn't fumble. They would have booed him. Jim Kearney <laughs> upending Robert Newhouse. By the way, Giff, I was talking about regional college football. The titanic battle between the Crimson and the Bruins. Brown against Taub. It'll be for the Ivy League crown in our last regional game, San Diego State against San Jose State. Third down and four. Ball just short of the nine yard line of the Kansas City Chiefs. Stop back. A lot of time, but no place to put the ball. And now he may run it in. All the way in. Roger Staubach. Touchdown Dallas. And Roger Staubach is hurt. Mike Sensabaugh hit him right at the goal line. The Staubach in obvious pain. It could be just the wind knocked out of him. However, we will not speculate. He's a tough cookie, but... He is some athlete. You've got to admire that man, his character as well as his ability. The first-rate human being. He was trying for the corner of the end zone. He had a lot of time to throw the ball. No receiver could he find. Turned around. Now it'll be a sprint between Mike Sensabaugh, number 20, and Roger Staubach for the flag. Sensabaugh nailed him right at the goal line. He gets in for the score. And Dallas has gone out in front, but there has been a hush that has fallen over the Texas Stadium. We might take this moment, if we could, to friends and the fans of Ralph McGill of the 49ers. He suffered a concussion. Now Roger Staubach is up. And Ralph McGill is enlisted in satisfactory condition after a concussion in a game yesterday against the Los Angeles Rams. He'll remain in the hospital in Los Angeles for a couple days observation, and then he will be returned to San Francisco. But it does not appear to be too serious. Fritz with the conversion. And Dallas moves out in front of Kansas City, 7-3. We'll be back at Texas Stadium in a moment. What a madhouse. What a headache. I'll take over, Joan. Here, take this. They're strong. Addison's adult strength. They're all adult strength. But while ordinary aspirin, buffered aspirin, and anison start with the same amount of pain reliever, adult strength anison adds 23% more. Then anison adds an extra ingredient not found in the others. How's your headache? Gone. And no upset stomach. Adult strength anison. What has Sheraton done for you lately? Sheraton is really flying high, putting up new hotels and motorins all over the world. And to stay at any Sheraton anywhere, just dial 800-325-3535. Come on, give us a buzz. That's what Sheraton does for you now. 12.30 remaining in the half. The Dallas Cowboys now out in front over the Kansas City Chiefs. 7-3, Roger Staubach scoring on a broken play, looking for a receiver, could not find one. Took it in from nine yards out. Tony Frisch will kick to either Charles Thomas or Jeff Kinney. Thomas 49, Kinney 31. Thomas at the one, bouncing all over the lot. And there is a chicken fight to come up with the football, and it appears as if Dallas has made the recovery. Well, that's the break that could turn this game completely over to the Cowboys. Punt, uh, kickoff completely mishandled. Well, that's that's the truth. It was mishandled. And what I didn't like about it is once he fumbled the ball, what he should have really done after he fumbled the ball was just go to it and fall on it. Now, he's trying to pick it up again. Don't do that once you made a big mistake like that. Just try to leap on the ball, and that's the end of the story. Consequently, the Dallas Cowboys has the ball, and as Howard says, it could be a route. At the 19-yard line of the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City just doesn't have the offensive power once they fall well behind in a ball game, in my judgment, to get back. 
Dallas, of course, fumbled earlier on the one-yard line of Kansas City. Starback going for the bundle, going for Pearson, almost picked off. Mike Sensabaugh, number 20, the free safety, and a fine one he is for Kansas City, moved in, deflected the ball that had been intended for Preston Pearson. Starback, obviously, just with the wind taken out of him by that tackle of Sensabaugh when he scored from nine yards out. Big Buck Buchanan coming out of the lineup as Kansas City prepares for what they anticipate. That would be the pass. Tim Carney, number 50, is in as an additional defender for Kansas City. Young is 30, 26 is Pearson for Dallas. Pearson, Pearson inside the 15. He reads well, snake that yardage. Gets five, it'll be third down and five. Jim Kearney made the stop. 12 minutes remaining in the first half. Kansas City scored first. 51-yard field goal, Jan Stenerud. Dallas came right back with Roger Staubach running it in from the nine-yard line. Staubach having a good year. All right, Dallas wants timeout. Roger Staubach calls timeout, looks over to his head coach, Tom Landry, and we'll return to Texas Stadium in just a moment. That's it. I'm going home to my mother. I'll send for my things. And for my Sony Trinitron. Okay. All right. I'll keep my Sony stereo and my Sony black and white portable. Then I keep my Sony clock radio. <laughs> keep your Sony clock radio and the Sony stereo. I'll take the black and white portable and the Sony Trinitron. Oh, no, oh, no, no, no. no. Yes, yes. My mother loves this Trinitron. That's beautiful color. You take my mother. Fine, I'll take your mother. I just traded my mother. Naralco, yes, sir, this is my coffee maker. Makes up to 12 cups automatically and perfect every time. I love it. And consumer tested magazines liked it, too. Hey, look, I know you can spend less for a coffee maker. <laughs> you could spend more, too. But I don't care what you pay. You can't buy a finer one. Mm. Take a tip from Danny Boy. If you compare like I did, you will buy a Norelco coffee maker. Next Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports, you'll see the Motorcycle Race of Champions, then Olga Corbett in the World Cup of Gymnastics, and the World Target Diving Championship here on ABC. Tell it like it is. We love you. Referring, of course, to our colleague, Howard Cosell. Roger Staubach comes back into the huddle. I think he just might have wanted a little additional time to recover from that shot he took from Sensabaugh. In any event, he's looking at a third down and five. The ball at the 14-yard line, 11:40 remaining in the first half. Cowboys out in front of Kansas City, seven to three. Five men in the pattern. Sawback scrambling again, gets it off to Fugit, catches the ball just about at the line of scrimmage. See that little carry red and go at him. Weighs about 178 pounds. Smallish but tough. How quickly they boo them here, don't they? <laughs> Tony Frisch comes out for Dallas. Tony not having a big year. Missed the 38 yarders I mentioned earlier against Washington that could have won that game last week. This will be an attempt from the 31 yard line. No question, Tony Frisch didn't even look at it. He knew he had it. The Cowboys extend their lead over the Chiefs to 10 to 3. This Saturday night on Saturday Night Live, Howard will have as his guest some, well, one really fine friend of all of ours, singer Andy Williams, super football fan, I might add, has been with us many nights on Monday night. Impressionist Marilyn Michaels, comedian Norm Crosby, magician Mark Wilson, and one of the outstanding touring acrobatic groups in the entire world, if not the most outstanding, the Chinese acrobats from Taiwan. Saturday Night Live with Howard Cosell. Norm Cosby, he's one of my favorites, you know. He's the guy who for save it's when he fragrates. 
Do you know when he talks like that, Howard? Yes, I'm yeah. also familiar with your own unintended malapropisms, Alex. Fragrant sound. Prince. Frank Everett along with Howard Cosell. Spanky, Alex Karras in a crowded Texas stadium. Fritch, who just hit from 31 yards. Out, kicks off, and is taken by Charlie Thomas. This time he holds on. Thomas with a nice run back out to the 28-yard line, a run back of 29 yards. Again, it was Calvin Peterson who was down there for Dallas. Right now, let's pause five seconds and allow our local stations along the line to identify themselves. Dallas Cowboys out in front of Kansas City. 10 to 3. The Chiefs scored first, a 51 yard field goal by Stinnerud. Staubach scored from nine yards out. And then Tony Fritz hit from 31 yards out. First and 10, Kansas City. Odalak. And he's stacked up as he moves over the 30 yard line. Jeff Throw Pew was there, number 75, along with Dave Edwards, number 52. Odalak had a quick decision to make there, Alex. There was an instant hold to his left. Had he veered left, he might have made more yardage. He elected instead to go straight ahead. Net result, gain of a yard, yard and a half, whatever. That's strictly option blocking, and, and, and the back has to take his you know, choice one way or the must other. Must read and must he, react right. instantly. I used you to really close my eyes a lot. Frank, you it really gets crowded there. You can't teach backs that. That's a natural instinct, I think, as far as I'm concerned. And he's one of the best natural ones around, Ed Podolak. His second down and eight. And now Kansas City will take too much time. That was five minutes, Frank, and I get, I'm getting bored now. Let's pick it up a little Alex, bit, guys. Alex, why, why should that happen? How can a quarterback let that happen? Well, I don't know. I know that they're calling them a little closer this year than normally. But sure, they're, they're stung by criticism of slowness in play vis-a-vis yeah. -vis the colleges where they turn out so many more plays. That's all there is to that. May I point out... Then why'd you Alex? ask me for, Howard? <laughs> <laughs> Howard, could I point out that Alex has never been in a huddle? I've been oh, in, that's not been true. In huddles. Yeah. We've been in defensive huddles, Frank. Uh, you guys do a lot of fatty patty. Right, Second down and 12. Livingston. Wide open. Barry Pearson. Pearson has the first down out to the 43 yard line, hit there by Cliff Harris. Interesting case history, Pearson. Pittsburgh had him, had so many wide receivers, they didn't hold on to him, and he's done a good job for Kansas City. We might point out, too, he's working against Mel Renfro's replacement, Benny Barnes, number 31. Renfro is not in the lineup tonight, did not start. And penalty now being assessed against Dallas. Personal foul against Dallas. Leroy Jordan, the defensive captain for the Cowboys, coming over to have a further explanation. That's not his number on his back. That's his age, isn't it, Frank? He <laughs> must be 55 years old, that man. Hey, he moves around like a kid. He's having a great year, he's Leroy. Got, he's got gray hairs on his chest, Frank. That's all. How do you know? I've taken showers with him before, Howard. The delay is for an official to move upfield and pick up his handkerchief. The way these people are booing, it's beginning to sound like Philadelphia. In Philadelphia. First down, Kansas City, the 42-yard line of the Dallas Cowboys. Play action fake by Livingston. Podolak, and Podolak has another Kansas City first down. Down to the 30-yard line. Covered there by Mark Washington. 9.48 to go in the second quarter. Kansas City trailing the Cowboys 10 to 3. The Cowboys have had four opportunities to move in for scores. They've capitalized in two. Well, really one for a touchdown, one for a field goal. First down, Kansas City. Play action fake again. And complete to MacArthur Lane. And Mac Lane struggling to get another first down, I believe, coming up just short inside the 21. Hit there by Cliff Harris. 
Livingston is picking his spots better and throwing much more sharply, don't you think, Alex? Yes, and he's throwing on first down, which means he's not going to get that big uh, rush from that front four. And I think right now he's doing a good job throwing that short pass on first down situations. Don't you, Frank? <laughs> I do. I'm, uh, and I really it must be a thrill for him. He went to high school here. He was born in Dallas, sat on the bench for so long, and now here he is playing in front of his friends, his family, and turning an incredible job. Second down, less than a yard. Podolak, another big hole, another Kansas City first down. Podolak moving down to the 16. Used everything he learned at Iowa for that run. Oh, yeah, he faked to the, to the outside, went right back into the inside, just like Forrest Dovashevsky would have taught him. Yeah, he's a superb athlete. We've talked about it before, but he's a fine skier. I've skied with him out in Colorado, a good skier. I played golf with him. He's a super golfer. Your and does everything on a football field. And yes. he's got a lot of girlfriends, too, Frank. Your satiric aside about Coach Evashevsky did not go unnoticed. I remember when you challenged him to a fight. I could have whipped him, too. On first down, Livingston, Brunson, wide open. And Brunson goes out of bounds at the 11-yard line. And Mike Livingston, and he's getting time to throw, which is the important thing. Alex mentioned earlier, it's going on the first down, and that is... The time to throw against Dallas. They're a very strongly regimented team. They do things over and over. They don't particularly care if you know they're going to do it because they feel execution will take care of it. Livingston completed his last four for 44 yards. Now on second down and five. MacArthur Lane. Bobbled the ball again, and I believe Dallas has recovered. Oh, yeah. What a play. Earlier in the first quarter, they fumbled at the one-yard line. They'll wait for the official call. And no, Dallas has recovered at the four-yard line. And Paul Wigan has to be disappointed. <laughs> He's a little mad, too. Watch it, Paul. You're on television now. Boy, he was tough when he played with Cleveland. He spat on me, Frank. He spat on me. So him. many of these tough, big runners, however, have a tendency to lose the football. MacArthur, when he burst for 10 yards on a play a few sequences earlier, fumbled as he was going out of bounds. He's always had a problem holding on to the football. Jim Braxton of Buffalo is another great running back who often gives up the football. Same two fumbles tonight. Both of them inside the five. Dennison fumbled for Dallas at the one. Now MacArthur Lane at the four. And here's Preston Pearson. He is, he bobbles the ball, and this could, could be a touchdown. That's it. Kansas City on the scoreboard. John Matuzak. Big John Matuzak. Oh, big Johnny. Scores for Kansas City. And now Wigan has done a 180. He's delighted. He can't tackle, but he can, he can jump on that ball. And, of course, Tom Landry showing the disappointment. I feel sorry for Doug Dennison because we had talked about his fumbling before. Not what you could call especially precise play by either side, Alex. Well, either side uh, really aren't doing a great job tonight. They're fumbling the ball and they're giving up the ball an awful lot. I don't know. Maybe it's the influence of Monday Night Football. I think they really get up to uh, for our games. You know, there's 50 million people. You know, there. just 60. got up into our booth, your favorite country singer. Charlie Pride, a resident Pride, of yes, Dallas. Sir. Hi, Charlie. Jan Sinerud will give us a new ball game. And we are tied at 10. Kansas City comes back. They tie the Cowboys at 10. We'll return to Texas Stadium in a moment. Metropolitan Life reminds you that the future will be here in a moment, and we can help you prepare for it. Sun is shining, things are growing, things are going well with you and me. A future plan together, a rich for life together, and things look bright as they can. Don't let the future take you by surprise. 
At Metropolitan Life, we've spent over a century helping people prepare for the future. And Metropolitan can do the same for you. Metropolitan, where the future is now. John Matuzak has just scored a touchdown for the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> A big dude, 6'8", 275 pounds. We'll take a look at it following the kickoff. I want you a blow. <laughs> <laughs> Stenerud will kick. Deep, number 26, Preston Pearson. Number 21, Doug Dennison. Dennison at his nine. And upended. Moves out over the 15 to the 17-yard line. And let's take a look at John Matuzak. Preston Pearson. Bobbled the ball at about the three or four yard line. It bounded into the end zone. And big John Matuzak pursued it with the rest of the Chiefs. In fact, it was Matuzak, really the first hit Pearson. There he is. John Matuzak, who was the first player picked in the draft in 73, traded by Houston to Kansas City last year for Curly Cope. And Curly Cope is doing a fine job at Houston. Cowboys, first and 10, their own 26. Staubach over the middle. And Staubach firing complete. This time, Gene Fugit holds on. First down, Dallas at the 40-yard line. Good pitch, good catch. Gene Fugit's quite a football player. He's 23 receptions this year. And it, he really had lost his job to Billy Joe Dupree, but Fugit offers a little versatility to Dallas. He can play either the tight end or he can play the wide receiver. And with 43-man rosters, you need that versatility. Inside eight minutes. Clock ticking at 7.25. Remaining in the first half is tied up at 10. Staubach over the middle again. This time he goes to Golden Richards, and Richards has another first down. He's at the 38-yard line of Kansas City, and Staubach on target. Emmett Thomas made the stop for Kansas City. The Cowboys appear angry. Alex, let's look at this again. Two quick pitches over the middle by Staubach, each on airing. Beautiful. Ooh, that's your basic... Oh, I don't tackle. I don't want to see this guy ever hurt Golden Richards. He's such a good looking man. Look at that guy. I That's tell unnecessary. You. Look at him. I love you, Golden. Thomas is renowned for his tackling. Cowboys. Their first and ten is at the 38 of Kansas City. Preston Pearson in motion. The toss goes to Newhouse. Newhouse gets another Dallas first down. Inside the 20. They'll mark it just short of the 19. And Mike Tensabaugh made the save for Kansas City. And again, Howard gets a salute of the capacity crowd, and he blows him a kiss. Yep. And I wish you could see this, ladies I and gentlemen. Oh, oh, oh. It's wild. I only hope he doesn't fumble. I said before, they'll boo him out of the stadium. <laughs> Newhouse now, 45 yards, six carries. So far, we've had critical fumble by Dennison, a critical fumble by Pearson. So Newhouse is excelling tonight. Preston Pearson. Pearson upended there by blitzing number 53, Ken Avery. <laughs> Bionic lips. <laughs> well, <laughs> if they mark me the $60 million That's man, his, I'll buy it. It's his yearly income. Jane Fugit now comes in for Dallas. It's been a lot of fun down here, though. It really has, Howard. You, you have a way of turning on a crowd. <laughs> like you've turned on an entire city. Gifford, it's a very valuable attribute. Indeed it is. I said it was a lot of fun. I've just kept out of sight. On second down at 15. Newhouse on the draw, big hole. Look out. Newhouse gets it back to the 15-yard line. It'll be third down and six, a gain of 10. I hope I've inspired the young man. But you know what Tex Ram, the president of the Cowboys, told us, Frank. You better be careful. <laughs> oh, no. What did he say? Howard? He'd like two Bobby Newhouses, one standing on the other's shoulder. Then he'd look like Calvin Hill. Third down and six. The ball at the 15. The score is tied at 10. Play action fake by Staubach. Going for Golden Richards, and he won oh, it. Oh, beautiful catch. Oh, Golden. 
Staubach never saw it. He was buried by Tom Keating as Golden Richards one-handed the ball in the end zone, bobbled it in the air. Let me tell you. He came down with it. That's as good a catch as you're going to see. And it came at a time when one of the best fly catches I ever saw came into our booth, and he can't believe it. A fella named Jimmy Pearsall. He used to catch him like that, but that was in baseball. This guy did it with a football. Tom Landry congratulating Golden Richards, the third-year man out of the University of Hawaii, formerly with Brigham Young, made a sensational catch of a Roger Staubach pass, and Roger never saw it. Tony Frisch. And the Cowboys have untied it. They lead the Kansas City Chiefs 17 to 10. Cowboys moving six, 73 yards on six plays. Let's look at it again. Number 74 is Keating. He'll come into your screen. He buries Staubach right there. Roger never saw it. Now look at this. A left-handed stab at it. Never took his eyes off it. Spectacular catch by Golden Richards. Truly really was. 5-10 remaining in the first half. I'll tell you a guy who can do that, Howard. Raymond Berry of the Baltimore Colts. He did that all the time. And then once in a while, Frankie did. <laughs> Why I, are you I had yourself, to do right? it. I was so slow. Gifford's greatest catch, as, as we look at Golden again, was a one-hander against Pittsburgh on a third down play in a game that meant the title. It look never, at that. It never came close to that, I'll tell you. What hand control. Mm. Golden Richards. And the Cowboys have moved in front of the Chiefs 17 to 10. Charles Thomas is deep. He's number 49. Jeff Kenny's back there, number 31. Fritz obviously kicking it to Thomas, who's having his problems. Thomas gets out to the 30-yard line. Good run back. 25-yard return. Charlie Thomas, not big, he's 5'9", 180 pounds, in his first year out of Tennessee State. Well, we saw him fumble early in the ball game, and of course it caused a lot of problems uh, for the Kansas City Chiefs, and I, I know he's thinking about things like that right now. And of course, I think he works a little hard, he's more conscious of what he's doing right now. He's scared, he doesn't want that, that coach to keep yelling at him. Look at the leg action, he's going to be a good ball player. Kansas City. From their own 30, this is Ed Podolak. And Podolak, the beautiful cut up field, gets another Kansas City first down. And Kansas City, surprisingly, are doing really well on the ground tonight. I wonder if they're going to use the old option pass play with Eddie, because he can execute that well. He was a quarterback at Iowa, you'll remember, Alex. I certainly do. A lot of offense tonight. Both teams moving back and forth, up and down the field. We've had a little bit of everything thus far. Howard mentioned the option might come up. Robert Newhouse throws it for Dallas. He does that very well. Newhouse does that very, very well. 43-yard line, first down, Kansas City. Incomplete, Larry Brunson. Incomplete because Larry looked at the defender coming right at him at the same moment the ball reached his hands. Mark Washington covering for Dallas. Kansas City sending their plays in by their tight end messengers. Billy Masters, number 84, now comes in. Out comes Walter White, number 88. Four minutes, seven seconds remaining in the first half. Cowboys over the Chiefs, 17 to 10. The Cowboys need this win tonight to remain tied with St. Louis and Washington in the NFC East. Livingston gets the screen off to Podolak. And it sets up well. And Podolak moves inside of Cowboy territory at the 48. Hit there by Cliff Harris. Alex, they had three blockers on one man, and they didn't really do away with him. No, did they, they didn't. And he, and he gave him the angle. He should have cut back in, I think, Ed, on that play. And he didn't. Uh, of course, uh, you know, it's we're up here, and he's down there. But if you can see it right here in the picture, he's got some great blockers out in front of him. All three of them out there. There's only one man he's got to beat. Now, he takes the angle, and he gives the defender a chance. And all he had to do is cut to the inside. He picked up a first down, that's for sure. That was D.D. Lewis, the linebacker for the Cowboys, playing off those blockers. D.D. Lewis? D.D. Dan Lewis is his real name. Did you know that, Frank? <laughs> no, I did not. Third and one, the ball at the 48. Bodelak gets the call, gets a big hole, and he gets open field. And Cliff Harris saves what could have been a Kansas City touchdown 
but it is another first down for Kansas City at the 35 of Dallas. A gain of 13. Ed Podolak having a big night replacing Woody Green. Let's repeat, Frank, that you've got to give a great deal of credit to line coach Joe Spencer. Considering the changes in that offensive line, the number of guards alone, this is the fourth left guard they're using tonight. Rocky Raisley, once with your old team, Detroit, Alex, this season. Well, it's tough. It's tough when you have new faces all the time in there, but they look like right now they're moving the ball pretty good. Livingston again on the first down. Unloads it over the middle to the tight end, Billy Masters. And Billy Masters has another Kansas City first down at the 26. And Livingston took quite a shot. 3.41 left in the half and counting down. Cowboys 17, Chiefs 10. In and out, up and down ball game. Lots of mistakes and yet some sensational play. Witness the Golden Richards catch on the last Cowboys touchdown. You know, we were talking about Paul Wigan early in the, in, the, in, the, in the beginning of the game, and we said he's a tough ball player, and that's how, that's how his team plays. It, I think that the character of a coach comes out on his ball club. In this case, they're a tough, hard-hitting ball club, and they're good doing point. a good job right now. The first down is at the 21 of the Dallas Cowboys. The reverse. Odalak gives it to MacArthur Lane. So MacArthur fighting off Cowboys. Gets six yards out of it before being stopped by Benny Barnes. Oh, Dede was kind of dizzy on that play, <laughs> Lewis. He went one way or the other. Let's see Dede Lewis dizzy. Well, he's looking at dizzy the Dizzy Dan Lewis here. this time. He doesn't know which way really to go. Now he starts to make his move. Uh-huh. Odalak giving the ball off to MacArthur Lane. Oh. And MacArthur Lane <laughs> doing a nifty little toe dance. Gets okay. away Dede Lewis. 2.33, clock is moving. The ball at the 15-yard line is second down and three. Livingston on the quarterback draw, and forget it, Jethro Pugh is all over him. And a flag has gone down. It'll be a face mask. And Jethro Pugh, number 75, was the man there, along with Bill Gregory, number 77. This was a design play, a quarterback draw. There's Jethro. Just got his fingers stuck in there a little bit. Yeah, well, that that wasn't on purpose. That was by accident, really, on that play. He just, you know, hung his uh, finger up in there, Frank, and he didn't mean it. He's telling the referee, I didn't mean it. Doesn't and hurt I don't think left, he meant does it. it. No, it doesn't, but nevertheless. First down, not a flagrant violation. No, it isn't flagrant. Thanks, Frank. Ball is at the 14-yard line. MacArthur Lane, big hole, and Lane inside the 10. Moving down to the 8-yard line, MacArthur Lane. Last year with Green Bay, MacArthur Lane at 362 yards, was traded to Kansas City during the offseason. Eight-year veteran out of Utah State. Did most of his top flight running with the St. Louis Cardinals before going to Green Bay. Walter White comes out, Billy Masters goes in, we head to the two-minute warning. And there it is, Mike Livingston moving over at the two-minute warning to confer with head coach Paul Wigan. One, Dallas two. over Kansas City, 17-10. Oh, here it is, George. It's the hot point refrigerator with water and ice through the door. Chilled water at the touch of a button. You never have to open the freezer for ice. And George... Look at this ice bucket. No more borrowing. Okay, and Alice, George. Alice, okay. Oh, your hot point dealer is the place to go for appliance values. Stop in and bring your husband. It's hot point month USA, so see your hot point dealer now. Where's my dandruff shampoo? Uh, where else? Oh. Try this beauty shampoo. Beauty shampoo? Mm-hmm. Mm. Smells mild, doesn't it? Yeah. Leaves your hair soft and clean. Mm -hmm. And kind of sexy looking. Right. But I have dandruff. This shampoo controls dandruff just as good as yours. Maybe better. If that's true, I will eat my hat. Well, it's true. Head and shoulders, you trick me. Yep. And don't forget to take your lunch. Strong against dandruff. Gentle on your hair. A lot of excitement here at Texas Stadium in Dallas. The Dallas Cowboys, the Kansas City Chiefs, in a seesaw battle. Next week, we're looking forward to another fine football game. It'll be Buffalo and Cincinnati, and we'll be at Cincinnati for that one. Kansas City has a second down and five. The ball on the eight-yard line. MacArthur Lane gets the call. The trap blocking up front. He's close to a Kansas City first down. 
He had to get just inside the four-yard line. He did not make it. So it will be third down, less than a yard. Clock ticking away. Three timeouts remaining for Kansas City. Dallas has two. Walter White hustles in with the play, and he better hustle. And now Kansas City has to use their timeout. They were very close to another delay of the game. One of the problems of bringing that play in and out. Action here in Dallas tonight, a lot of it. And there will be action in New York for Saturday Night Live coming up this Saturday with Howard Cosell. Let's hear more. Hi, big boy. My name is not my West. My name is Marilyn Michaels, but I'll be appearing this week with Howard Cosell on Saturday Night Live. And I'll also be Dana Shaw, Barbara Streisand, and a lot of other people that Howard couldn't afford. Mm. Hello, you sexy man. That's this Saturday night, live at 8, 7 Central, on ABC. Why don't you come up and see us sometime? Mm. Oh, man. Did you see that, uh, Frank? I, I saw that. Don't be bitter. I mean, he put both lips on that cheeks that time. Wasn't that terrific? <laughs> and she smiled. Yeah. Knowingly. <laughs> the bitterness of elderly men always manifests itself. <laughs> they call them dirty old men. <laughs> Third down, less than a yard for Kansas City. They trail 17 to 10. 129 remaining in the first half. Both the tight ends are in there for Kansas City. Podolak goes in motion. And Livingston is going to go for it himself. Livingston does not get the touchdown, but he does get a Kansas City first down and kills the clock. D.D. Lewis moved over to take Livingston out of bounds. Interesting halftime coming up as we look at this play once more. Livingston calling on his own running abilities. Frankie doesn't have a great deal of speed, but he had good blocking in there, and uh, I think if he had just a little faster, if Staubach would have had the ball, I think it would have gone in. Uh, You're right. Don't take anything away from Livingston, but he just doesn't have that, that heavy-legged heavy quickness. Heavy -legged kid. Maybe Livingston was trying to match Staubach's earlier touchdown right of nine. In any event, he got the first down, his first and goal at the one. 124 remaining in the half. This time, you give it to the runner, Podolak. And Podolak gets in for Kansas boy, City. Yeah. And you can see oh, it on Paul Wiggins' face. Iowa Hi, does it again. Yo, Greatest in the land. Joe oh, Wiggins. Every hand. I'm sorry, Frank. Wiggins has every right to be proud of this team. They made more trades than any other team in the NFL during the offseason, with the exception of San Diego. The Chiefs made 15 separate trades. These players have not been together that often, and yet they are doing a creditable job. They played good football throughout the entire season. They just did lose last week to Houston. And they are fighting the Cowboys even here at Texas Stadium. Jan Stenerud will attempt to tie it up. It's one of the exciting, real exciting plays we're going to see right now, the extra point, Frank. I always look forward to seeing that. It was in Denver yesterday. Stenerud ties it at 17. 120 remain on the clock. There's Ed Podolak having a fine night. Let's look at him again. As the Chiefs move 10 plays and 70 yards, capped by Podolak going in from the one-yard line. He's fine, too, Frank, around that goal line. He puts Good his head Good block by there. MacArthur Lane there, yeah. too, number 42. Good driving legs, keeps him moving. MacArthur Lane, <coughs> excuse me, is a great block. Big, tough. Once played middle linebacker, remember, Alex? Not back again. in college. Oh, back in college, yes, certainly. But not in the pros so hard. Here's a look at the moon through the hole in the roof of the Texas Stadium. <laughs> half a moon. Can you see half a, a half a moon there? <laughs> there it is, 17 apiece. 120 remaining. The Cowboys have two timeouts. John moon Stenerud river. started out on the field to kick off and then came back to confer with oh, Paul Wigan. Deep, number 21. For Dallas, Doug Dennison, number 26, is Preston Pearson. This is Dennison. He drops the ball. And Dennison, with a whole lot of running in one place, drops the football. And, well, there's not been marked. Kansas City, I believe, has come up with it. I really feel sorry for Dennison. 
Kansas City has recovered another Dallas fumble. Number 45, I believe, Morris Legrand, a rookie out of Tampa. And we have seen some zany happenings this evening. I would Grand did recover it for Kansas City. You call it zany, I would characterize it as shoddy. Well, there's different strokes for different folks. <laughs> First and 10 for Kansas City, the 15 yard line of Dallas. MacArthur Lane carrying Cowboys with him down close to the 10 yard line. Let's look at it again. Dennison never did have control of it. He did a little dance step there. Then he got pop. Came up with it. LeGrand came up with the football. The rookie from Tampa. Making his mark on the special teams for Kansas City. Kansas City calls timeout. They have one remaining. There he is, Morris LeGrand. NCAA Regional College Football coming up this Saturday. Some exciting games. Check your listing for the game that will take place in your area. This Saturday on ABC Sports, a full schedule of five NCAA regional football games. Eastern viewers will see Brown bidding for its first Ivy League title ever against Harvard in a critical game. Kansas, an upset winner over Oklahoma last Saturday, entertains Colorado. San Diego State and San Jose State, each 8-1, meet for the Pacific Coast Athletic Association title. Auburn faces Georgia in the Southeast Conference, and Texas Tech battles Baylor in the Southwest. That's all Saturday on ABC. We'll see all the Texas All-Stars. They took a vote down here in Texas to the, the greatest players ever to come out of Texas. And they're all here tonight, 25 of them. There's some of the names. Meanwhile, it's second down and six for Kansas City. Time running out. This is Podolak. And look at that beautiful cutback as Cliff Harris looked like he was going to nail Podolak at the line of scrimmage. Ed Podolak with that beautiful, deceptive style of running. Cut back, and Kansas City is going to move in front of the Cowboys. And Ed Podolak has to be delighted with his night. That's what you call taking advantage of a turnover. I like what you said earlier, Alex. This team plays with the character of its coach. Oh, yeah, they, they don't have anyone, as you said. They, they, there's no one left. Everyone's injured, and yet they kiss just a screen. He comes in, Howard, like he's going to nail him at the line of scrimmage. Now watch Podolak for that cutback. And Rocky Rais Raisley really put two guys out on the block out there. Rocky Raisley, the offensive guard, did a good job on that play. You know who ran like this man? Paul Horning. Oh, yeah, I mentioned turn that, the too. corner. That's right. Alex Plant mentioned that, that earlier. Cut back against the grain. Very tough down on a five, six yard line. Very tough. Good looking man. The clipping call moves the ball back to the 14 yard line of Dallas. He moved to Gifford country. Aspen, Colorado. Charlie Young is in there, number 30. Now the Cowboys into the shotgun. Ball back. Looking. Callback finally going down to the 25-yard line, using up almost 12 seconds of the remaining time. And risking Gain of his 11. life. First down, Cowboys. Finally stopped by Big Buck Buchanan. Well, unlike a lot of quarterbacks, Roger Staubach's an athlete. And he can run and very effectively. That's the plaque all of the Texas all-timers whom Giff was describing earlier going to get tonight, each of them. Remarkable reunion party last night, wasn't it, Giff? It really was. Uh, they were having a little fun when I left. Kyle Rote looks so much younger than you, it's hard to believe you with teammates. <laughs> yeah, I can sing better than Bobby Lane, though. That's not hard. <laughs> Bobby, of course, the ringleader, as he always is, of the group that gathered last evening. A whole bunch of iced tea disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> Always on Sunday. The great Bobby Lane book. Co-authored by Bobby Drum of Pittsburgh, the drama boy. What an um, incredible turnout for that vote down here, too, Art. Over a million. I don't understand how Landry lost by 200 votes to Bill Bradley. I think they both should have been in there. Bill, of course, the fine defensive back with the Eagles. Of course, we talk about Bobby Lane, but Sammy Baugh was voted the number one all-time Texas quarterback. He's here. We'll have a look at him. You know, he was the best punter I have ever seen, Frank. Still has the NFL standard for it. First down, Dallas. 
shotgun. Shot indicating 36 seconds. Foul back going for Drew Pearson. Incomplete. Really been a back and forth game. Kansas City out in front once again. They took the lead, three to nothing, on a 51-yard field goal. Dallas came back, hit it 7-3 on a Staubach nine-yard touchdown run. Fresh hit to make it 10-3 Dallas. Matuzak recovered a fumble to tie it up at 10 apiece. Golden Richards made a spectacular catch of a Staubach pass to make it 17-10 Dallas. Podolak scored to make it 17 apiece. And then Podolak scored again a few moments ago, and Kansas City leads 24-17. Robert Newhouse back in the game. Cowboys again out of their shotgun on second down. The bomb are going for Golden Richards. And Bailey almost had it. Golden Richards had got behind Jimmy Marsalis. And the pass was absolutely dead perfect. And I guess. When you recall the one he made in the end zone a while ago. That's right. You just don't catch the easy ones. It's forgivable. Dead in stride. A look at it again. And in all probability, he would have gone in for another score. So action, even in the closing seconds here in the first half. That may be why Kerry Reardon Reardon has supplanted Jimmy Marsalis. What a time to let a man get behind you. Well, Jimmy's a very aggressive ball player. He'll come up and try to bump one off a lot, and once in a while you can get, get behind him. I'm sorry, I'm stuttering a little bit, Frank, but carry on. Out of a shotgun on third down. 25 seconds remaining in the first half. Staubach over the middle, gets the first down. His big tight end, Dugan. He's out to the 43-yard line. Cowboys want another timeout. And that's it. No more timeouts for Roger Staubach. Of course, Frank and Howard, you know, the advantages of the, of the shotgun is that the quarterback is already back there, which enables him to have about, oh, maybe two more seconds than he normally would have. An if instant downfield view. Yes. Yes. Also allows his receivers, the halfbacks and fullback, have moved out onto the wing set, and they could get downfield much more quickly. Yeah, I was going to say all those things, you guys. Why didn't you ever play in the shotgun formation, Gip? No one put it in. I would have been willing. Yeah. A foul Casting. on the field. That's what delayed it. 17 seconds remaining in the first half. Now back again into the shotgun. Young and Pearson move into the wing spots. Another bomb is then intended for Drew Pearson, and he cannot come back. Emma Thomas, number 18, down there deep with Drew Pearson. Yeah, why are they pulling that? I have no idea, Howard. Well, I do. The def defenders Alex seem does. to be entangled uh, on the offensive of uh, Drew Pearson at that particular time. I think guys. they probably would have liked I'm it, really to have observing had an this game. As you let's can look see. at it again. Now you can watch this as we go downfield with Drew Pearson. You can watch the defender right here. He will, he will entwine his legs. There, you see that? No. Yeah. Well. Emmett Thomas having another big year. He led the NFL in interceptions last year. Already has four this year. He'll get beat, however, quite often. He takes a lot of <laughs> chances for a cornerback. On second down. Staubach going to Charles Young. Incomplete as Staubach is set down rather rudely by number 86, Big Buck Buchanan. Buckaroo was in there like it was 1970 that time. He's lost a lot of weight, Howard. Uh, He's also lost a lot of speed. Yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of weight and a lot of speed. <laughs> I was going to say that, Howard. He actually is playing on a very sore foot today. Yeah, he is. Because of the loss of Wilbur Young and John Lohmeyer, the regular defensive right side for the Chiefs. Six seconds. This should be the last play on third down. Number 81 comes in. Percy Howard. Bottom of your screen. Top of your screen is the speed man, Drew Pearson. 
This one is all or nothing. Going for Pearson. And he gives it a one-handed attempt in a lot of traffic as time runs out. Spectacular topsy-turvy first half. The Chiefs over at Dallas, 24 to 17. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Introducing the 1976 Ford LTD. Front view, back view, side view, and bottom view. Something you should think about before you buy a car. What's underneath the good looks that attract you in the first place? Two years ago, I introduced the 74 LTD in advertising that urged consumers to compare. Told them what to look for inside and out. In short, how to recognize a well-built car. This year, Ford surveyed thousands of owners of 1974 cars to find out about any troubles that had developed in a number of areas relating to body quality and durability. Areas like paint, doors, locks, windows, squeaks, and rattles. Just over a third responded. And a lower percentage of LTD owners reported troubles developing over the past year than owners of Impala, Fury, or even Chrysler. That doesn't prove LTD is the best built car. But it probably does say, look at this car before you buy anything else. The closer you look, the better we look. The department turns a killer loose, and Beretta turns in his badge to bring him in on his own. Robert Blake is Beretta. Then, Starsky and Hutch hit the streets after a psycho cop killer. The cop he killed was a lady, Starsky's lady. You get all the action covered with Beretta, Starsky and Hutch. Wednesday on ABC. That's the story at halftime. Kansas City over Dallas 24 to 17 in a zany football game. We've had fumbles. We've had just about everything imaginable. And we are anticipating more of the same in the second half. 41 points here in the first half. Kansas City over Dallas 24 to 17. Right now we'll give you a little uh, football history lesson. 15 years ago about 100,000 youngsters signed up for a new football oriented youth event called punt pass and kick. Sponsored by the Ford dealers of America in cooperation with the NFL. Punt, pass, and kick is today one of the most successful youth activities of its kind ever. Punt, pass, and kick is celebrating its 15th anniversary this year, and over the years, 12 million youngsters have participated. The names of 90 of these youngsters have been permanently placed in the punt, pass, and kick exhibit at the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. And you can just imagine how proud they are. There is the Hall of Fame. Punt, pass, and kick has come a long way indeed, and 15 years ago, I don't think anyone dream that punt, pass, and kick would become popular among gals. So much so that this year over 5,000 gals have signed up. And for the eighth year in a row, over one million youngsters participated in punt, pass, and kick. Quite an anniversary tribute. Punt, pass, and kick, 15 years old and still growing. The punting and kicking portions of the punt, pass, and kick competition were held here earlier tonight. And this passing event will determine which of these punt, pass, and kick NFC competitors will move on to the semifinals as representatives of the Dallas Cowboys in Detroit on December the 14th. The punt, pass, and kick officials will start the youngsters. They'll spot the ball as it lands on the fly, measure the accuracy, and record the scores. So the officials are ready. Let's begin the passing event with two eight-year-old future stars. And number 67 is John Robertson. He's from Dallas, Texas. Good throw for John. And now we move over to another eight-year-old, number 65. He's Norman Shaver. He's from Eufaula, Oklahoma. Good pass by Norman. Now the nine-year-olds. And this is number 23. He's James Scotty from Albany, Texas. Oh, good toss by Jim. And now number 51. A 23-yarder by Jim. And now number 51, the other nine-year-older. He's Randall Post Oak. He's from Laverne, Oklahoma. Let it fly, Randall. Good toss by Randall. And now our 10-year-olds. That one of 25 yards. Number 32 is Scott Church. He's from Stanton, Texas. Good toss by Scott. 
And now number 91 is Lance Glasgow, Tonkawa, Oklahoma. Little offline, but a nice toss by Lance. 23 yards. And now the 11 year olds. Dwayne Friesen from Kilgore, Texas, wearing number 74, made famous by Bob Lilly. Good toss, Dwayne. And now number 66, Randy Savage from Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Just a little slip. Hang in there, Randy. Now the 12-year-olds. Jeff Sider, he's from Grand Prairie, Texas, and he's wearing number 12. A bullet. Jeff Sider with a 37-yarder. And now Joe Leach, number 90, from Thomas, Oklahoma. Good, tossed by Joe Leach. And now we move on to our 13-year-olds. That tossed by Leach, 28 yards. And now, number 81 is Eddie Weiss. He's from Linden, Texas. Good toss, Eddie Weiss, 32 yards. And now number 83, Gary Shornick from Duncan, Oklahoma, our last competitor at 13. And Gary gets off a beauty. A 50-yarder, congratulations. That completes the passing portion of tonight's competition. We'll have the winners following the third quarter. Kansas City out in front of the Dallas Cowboys, 24 to 17. And it has been a first half that has been hard to believe. 41 points scored. Kansas City opened with a lead. Dallas came back and they went ahead. Kansas City came back and there it is now. Kansas City, 24, Dallas 17. A lot of action yesterday. Let's take a look at the highlights. Rich Stadium, Buffalo, New York. The Bills against the Colts. The two met earlier, and the Bills won a tough contest. Now it looks like the Bills are going to run away with it. Early first quarter action. The juice on the loose. Through the hole, the acceleration. Then eluding one tackler. Now that tackler cutting back as he did it. Two more tacklers can't down him before he scores the touchdown. Seven to nothing. Ferguson then throws to him twice for touchdowns. This is the first of the two, and quickly the Bills assume a 21 to nothing lead over the Colts in what appears to be a growing rout. But it wasn't to be that way on the day. The score 21 to nothing. Ted Marsha Broder, the Baltimore Colts coach, a worried man, quite obviously. But with the score 28 to 7, Marty Domris on a fake field goal throws to Billy Olds out of Nebraska, and suddenly it's 28 to 14 and a growing ball game. Then, shortly before the end of the first half, Burt Jones is back looking for a receiver and finding the fleet footed Roger Carr. He's off by himself, touchdown, and it's 28 to 21 in favor of Buffalo. Marsha Broda is breathing more easily. Then watch Burt Jones, the gifted young quarterback who can run as well as pass as he goes 19 yards for a touchdown with the score tied 28 all and Baltimore leads. Then as you see there, Joe Ferguson is racked up, concussion out for the day. So Buffalo is now taking a beating. With the score 42 to 28 Buffalo, Gary Marangi hits Bob Chandler to make it 42 to 35 in favor of Baltimore. With a minute 20 plus left, David Lee has to punt for Baltimore. He gets the punt off, but he's roughed up in the process by two of the Bills. Baltimore keeps possession and wins 42 to 35. That's Bum Phillips. The head coach of the Houston Oil is now one of the toughest teams in the NFL. They must go against the Super Bowl champion Steelers at Three Rivers Stadium. Pittsburgh's leading here three to nothing, and the throw, Bradshaw to Swan, makes it 10 to nothing, Pittsburgh. Early in the second quarter, the score's the same. Dan Pastorini punts for Houston to number 88, Lynn Swan. The ball off the face mask. It's recovered by number 33, Mark Cotton. He 
Thus puts Houston in scoring position and banging in for the touchdown is 47, Ronnie Coleman. Houston trails 10 to 7. With a minute 27 left in the half, Bradshaw is back to throw an eight-yarder after apparently beginning the run for it to Larry Brown. Touchdown, and it's 17 to 7, the Steelers lead. Near the end of the first half, Pastorini throws a pass intended for Billy White Shoes Johnson. It's intercepted by Mel Blunt. That stops the Oilers' scoring threat. Then, in the third quarter, Pittsburgh still leading 17 to 7. You see Dan Pastorini running the football and racked up. He has to temporarily leave the game. He came back later, as you all know. 2.38 left in the game, 17 to 10. Pastorini throws for Ken Burrow, double zero. Interference against Mel Blunt. That sets up a tying touchdown for Houston, 17 all. Then in the waning seconds of the game, Bradshaw essays the pass, touchdown to John Stallworth, Pittsburgh 24, Houston 17. St. Louis at Philadelphia, Veterans Stadium, Philadelphia. The Eagles get an early 10 to seven lead and Gabriel is hot. He throws right down the center to Poe James and it's a touchdown and that makes it 17 to seven for Philadelphia, which had lost a week ago tonight, 42 to three. This time it's Coyell, the St. Louis coach who's worried. The Eagles are now leading 23 to 14. And watch Jim Hart. He can't find the receiver. He snakes in five yards. Touchdown from 23 to 14. It becomes 23 to 21. Then with three seconds left, the unerring Jim Bakken kicks the field goal. St. Louis squeaks by Philadelphia, 24 to 23. The cards are six and two. Mile High Stadium, Denver, Colorado. Five inches of snow the night before. The Bronx with the ball, trailing the Bengals seven to nothing. Floyd Little bursting in for the score. That made it seven to six. Then a bad snap from center. The conversion thus fails. The Bengals retain the lead. A little more than five minutes left in the third quarter. Denver ahead 13 to 10. Kenny Anderson to Chip Myers. The lateral to Isaac Curtis. He goes all the way down to the four-yard line. Two plays later, Booby Clark goes in for the touchdown, and Cincinnati wins it 17 to 16. Coffee, tea, or a flick of my bit. Private, don't you know to flick your bit in the presence of an officer? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello. <laughs> now that we're in the tunnel of love, could I have a flick of your bit? Why just light up when you can flick your Bic? It's smooth, easy on the thumb, and you get thousands of flicks from a single Bic. The Bic Butane. Keep flicking your Bic, Marsha. There's got to be a ship within at least a thousand miles of it. This moment is devoted to all the grandmas in the world. The women with more love than you can hold in your arms at one time. And to the little people who make the regal title of grandma all possible. If you're a grandma with your children just across town, you're lucky. But if your special friend is across the country, you're still only half a day away when you fly the Boeing 747. Go get together sometime soon. There's a reception committee that believes you're the most important passenger on that plane. Mama. Boeing. Getting people together. This Saturday on ABC Sports, a full schedule of five NCAA regional football games. Eastern viewers will see Brown bidding for its first Ivy League title ever against Harvard in a critical game. Kansas, an upset winner over Oklahoma last Saturday, entertains Colorado. San Diego State and San Jose State, each 8-1, meet for the Pacific Coast Athletic Association title. Auburn faces Georgia in the Southeast Conference, and Texas Tech battles Baylor in the Southwest. That's all Saturday on ABC. Louis Cardinals. 24 to 17, the Chiefs over the Dallas Cowboys, and it's been a wild football weekend here in Dallas as some of the all-time greats have returned to Dallas to be presented to this capacity crowd here at Texas Stadium. They are voted by the Texas sports writers and the 7-Eleven stores. They distributed ballots 
There you see John David Crow, one of the running backs that was picked as on this all Texas team. And <laughs> we have had a lot of fun with this man over the years, Bobby, Bobby Lane. Lane. He was a second string pick to Sammy Ball. Six-time All-Pro and member of the NFL Hall of Fame, Clyde Bulldog Trainer. A legend in his time and for all of the years thereafter, Bulldog Turner out of Harden Simmons. And quarterback from Texas Christian and the Washington Redskins, six times All-Pro and charter member of the NFL Hall of Fame, Sammy Ball. Uh, you're looking at Dope Walker, and here comes Sammy Ball. He still holds a, several records, one of them uh, for average touch and for a season. Back. He was an incredible and athlete. And the Detroit Lions, four times all pro. You'll Dope hear it now. Walker. The Doka, number 37, as Howard likes to say, and he was a great athlete. His popularity around here is such that you'd think he was still playing. Married to an Olympic skier, Skeeter Werner, who's here with him. Went to a first hockey game ever with me. Uh, Bob Lilly, who just retired after a sensational career with the Dallas Cowboys. 25 Texas all-timers, Giffer. This is not just a local event. These are some of the greatest names in the history of the sport. We miss some of them. Uh, there's Kyle Roth, there's Marvin Upshaw, Bill Bradley, Bud McFadden, Jack Pardee, Del Shoffner, an old teammate of mine. And now, ladies and gentlemen, speaking for e. the all E.J. gave Howard a pair of cowboy boots at the beginning of the game. Present Mr. Bob Lilly. And Bob Lilly is going to speak for the team. Thank you. On behalf of my teammates who represent State of Texas, all-time professional football team. I wish to thank 7-Eleven and the Texas Sports Writers Association for making this day possible. I know this is a day that we'll all remember the rest of our lives. Again, thank you. And there they are. Bob Lilly speaking for the all-time Texas team. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, Kansas City versus the Dallas Cowboys is being brought to you by Sears Tire and Auto Centers, home of the Die Hard Battery and the Sears Road Handler Steel Belted Radial Tire. And we'll be ready for the second half kickoff between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Dallas Cowboys right after this word from our local stations. See Grandpa Jones with the Grand Ole Opry at 50 tomorrow night here on ABC. Our new early morning show on ABC is called Good Morning America, and I'm your host, David Hartman. In case you didn't see us this morning, and to help you get to know us a little better, here are a few of the people who are with us. I've seen the secret era blacklist of American firms that are considered pro-Zionist. I counted about 2,000 American companies on the list. And she doesn't want to be in show business. She wants to be my wife, and I want her to be my wife. Let's hope that Eddie Fisher doesn't repeat the past. When I first started flying the pipeline, there weren't women there at all. Zero. From Prudhoe Bay, standing on the Arctic Ocean, on the edge of no place, I'm Geraldo Rivera. Believe it, David. My voice is stronger than it's ever been. My steps are lighter, and I'm breathing easier. I know that I am on the right path. I hope you'll join Nancy Dussault and me tomorrow on Good Morning America when our guests will be Senators Barry Goldwater and George McGovern, along with our regulars, Rona Barrett, Jack Anderson, and Irma Bombeck. Join us, won't you? Halftime activities winding up here at Texas Stadium in Dallas. Incredible 41-point first half. The Kansas City Chiefs leading the... Dallas Cowboys now 24 to 17. Let's go back and take a look at the action. This is Roger Staubach early in the first quarter looking for a receiver could not find one. He heads for the end zone from nine yards out and he runs into number 20 Mike Sensabaugh. He gets him for the touchdown to put Dallas out in front seven to three. But he takes a terrific shot from Sensabaugh was on the turf for a while. Touch silence here. But he's all right. He came back in the game. John Matuzak of Kansas City, number 79, the defensive end. 
causes a fumble. Preston Pearson coughs it up. Ball dribbles into the end zone. Matuzak is there. And Kansas City pulls back to tie it 10 apiece. Here's Roger Staubach on the sidelines now. Was shaken up, but not seriously injured. And Ed Podolak was having a big night in the first half for the Kansas City Chiefs. Here he is. This tied it up. Or rather, this sent Kansas City out in front, 24 to 17. Beautiful cut black, avoiding free safety. Cliff Harris and the Chiefs, who have played this way all year long, they have come from just about every team in the National Football League. 15 trades they made during the offseason. And under Paul Wigan, they have become a very pulled together football team. Ready now for the second half. This is Tony Fritsch. He'll kick off to number 49, Charles Thomas. And number 31, Jeff Kinney, the former Nebraska All-American. There he is, number 31 on your left. Thomas on your right, number 49. Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell and Alex Karras. The second half is underway. Charles Thomas. And the little speedster finds a hole, and he gets out to the 35, out to the 37-yard line. A return of 32, and Kansas City will have their first possession. Mike Livingston will be at quarterback. And Charles Thomas shaken up a little bit. Oil just ran out of his shoe. And Livingston will be in there with Ed Podlack, as we said, having a fine night. MacArthur Lane will be at fullback, number 42. The wide receivers, 83, Brunson, 85, Barry Pearson. And the tight end, they'll alternate, number 84, Billy Masters. He'll be checking in and out with Walter White. First and 10 for Kansas City, 37-yard line. And... Center, Jack Rudney was not satisfied with the football. And we'll take a quick look at that offensive line. Rudney at center, Raisley, Condon of the guards, Nicholson, and Getty are the tackles. And they've been doing a fine job, Kansas City. Moving well on the ground tonight. Odlak with another big hole, and he's been doing this all night. Very close to a first down. Out over the 45 to the 46. It will be short. It'll be second and one. They've been taking care of that front four right now. They're really running out. Ned Jones and Jethro Pugh, Larry Cole, Randy White. As I said, they've been together for a little while now, and uh, they're getting pushed right now. Edwards, Jordan, D.D. Lewis, the veteran linebacking crew of the Cowboys. Podolak now with 84 yards and 11 carries. Oh. MacArthur Lane this time, and Charlie Waters comes up there and nails MacArthur Lane. And Randy White also there in pursuit. Characterizing the Kansas City play. All right, let's look quickly at the Dallas defensive backfield. Washington, Bonds, Harris, Waters, as Frank mentioned in the first half, Renfro out. Kansas City has moved against the Dallas defensive line as well or better than any other opponent this year. Livingston had a poor first quarter, hit one for five for five yards, but in the second quarter came alive, six for seven for 66 yards. Thus, mixing the pass and the rush and capitalizing on Dallas fumbles, they lead. On third down and two, Podolak. Cutting back, driving for the first down, he does not get it. Dave Edwards, number 52, a veteran, 13-year man out of Auburn. Where Dallas made the stop, and Kansas City will bring on their punter, Gerald Wilson. A big stop it was, Frank. Obviously, what Kansas City wanted to do was exercise ball control. Oh, yeah, and of course, they, they jammed up in the middle, and they challenged them to go to the outside, and that's what they had to do. They took it to the outside. They didn't come up with that first down. Golden Richards, who made a dazzling one-handed catch for a Dallas touchdown earlier. Gerald Wilson. Second only in the AFC to Oakland's Ray Guy. High, booming kick. Richards looks at it, looks upfield, has time, gets back out close to the 25 yard line. Offensively now, Roger Staubach, again a quarterback. He was not seriously shaken up in that touchdown run. He's in there with. Alternating backs. They'll open with 26 Preston Pearson and number 44 Robert Newhouse. The wide receivers 88 Drew Pearson, Golden Richards 83. The tight end Gene Fugit number 84. A veteran offensive line with the exception of rookie Herbert Scott number 68 at left guard. He's a rookie from Virginia Union. 
First and 10 for Dallas. From their own 24-yard line, they trail 24-17. This is Newhouse. And Matuzak moves over to stop New, uh, Newhouse. Well, of course, Matuzak's been kind of controversial in his career. It's only been a short career, but right now he's showing a little agility right now. He's going right out to there, and he's got some speed. He knocks down Newhouse. Good play. And along with Matusek, they got a pretty good front four. As I said, it's a makeshift, but, uh, but they're all uh, veterans. Buck Buchanan, Tommy Keating, who is a good friend of mine, and Bob Maddock playing the right end. Missing, of course, Wilbur Young and John Lohmeyer. They would be starters. They're injured. They're not in there tonight. On second down and eight. Sawback with good protection, but no open receivers. Keating misses, and Sawback has the first down. Scampering out over the 35 to the 37, pursued there by Bob Maddox. And Tom Keating. Stallback's getting a deserved hand. He is the scrambler we've talked about when he has to be. As for the linebackers on Kansas City, another veteran crew, Ken Avery. He's smallish but strong and tough. Willie Lanier, who was going to retire but didn't, remains great. Jim Lynch and the secondary, Reardon, Thomas, Kearney, and Sensible. Lenny Dawson, either 40 or 41, still handsome. Marvelous profile, Alex. In his 19th year. Dallas from their own 36. Preston Pearson looking for running room and finding very little. Gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. Preston Pearson, of course, began his career, as we all remember, back in Baltimore when he broke in as a rookie out of Illinois and led the National Football League in kickoff returns. Three years later, he went to Pittsburgh and was there until this year, and as Howard mentioned earlier, is the only... Dallas Cowboy on this 43 man roster to ever play with another NFL team. That's the kind of organization they are. Pearson with the call again. And Pearson close to the 45. It'll be third down and two. He squirmed. Frank has not yet used the verb squirted tonight, but that will come. Pearson, of course, was traded from Baltimore as. Frank mentioned to Pittsburgh in a trade that turned out to be a honey for the Baltimore Colts in a series of trades with Pittsburgh. Baltimore acquired Roy Jefferson now with Washington and Ray May now with Denver. But those two together brought Baltimore the Super Bowl in 71 or helped him. Third down along two. Ball just short of the 45. Pearson gets the call gets a tremendous block from Rayfield Wright. And I believe he has the first down, but you saw that big number 70, a former tight end for the Cowboys, been playing in tackle now for several years. Got a good block. And Pearson got the first. Putting this game in perspective, a reminder, Dallas must win the tie with Washington and St. Louis, each of them already at 6-2. and two. Dallas presently at 5-2. and two. Kansas City with only an outside hope in the Western Division of the AFC, but a team good enough to have exploded to a 42-10 victory over Oakland. At the 47-yard line, Dallas moving. Pearson again. Pearson inside Kansas City territory. Gets six, and the boos are starting to roll out of the 65,000. Oh, they, they thought it was a late hit, Frank, but I, I don't think so. I don't question that. He was going after him. I don't think he had intentions to hit him late. He just went over and hit him. And uh, I, I think, I think they really react here. Yeah, they sure do. I can attest to that. And Howard, I, I think Dallas is doing a smart thing right now. They're trying to establish a running game, and that's what they need to do now. They're starting to go down the field, and they're working on that front four. And as we've talked about, it's, it's a makeshift front four. Bulldogging tackle by Willie Lanier. Second down and four. The ball at the 47 of Kansas City. Play action fake. Starback. What's Golden oh, Richards? He's ball. wide open. Oh, beautiful throw. Golden Richards with his second. Touchdown of the night, a 47 yard strike from Roger Straubach. Golden Richards, who earlier stunned the stadium with a one handed touchdown catch. Harry Redden was supposed to be covering him, Frank. Harry is down and holding on to his right knee on the sidelines now as the jubilant Golden Richards goes off. Howard, we talked about they're trying to establish that running game, which they started to do. And of course, when that happens, you tighten up that secondary enough and you're going to get a free once in a while out there. And that's exactly what happened. Gary. Golden Richards almost had another touchdown if you're with us right before the first half when Roger Staubach running out of time just threw it as far as he could and was right in the hands of Richards. 
He did not hold on. This one he did, however. And we are close to another tie ball game, and that's how it's been all night. Gary Reard now being helped, helped off. off. He Looks is, like the right knee, Frank. He's holding his right leg as Tony Frisch ties it up at 24. A wild, zany football game from Dallas, Texas, where we'll return in just a moment. When you see this emblem at a savings and loan association, what does it mean? It means no one has ever lost a penny in a savings account insured by this U.S. government agency, established by an act of Congress in 1934. FSLIC, Federal Savings and Loan Insurance Corporation. Look for this emblem of safety at your savings and loan association. Every winter, it's a battle. You need the Sears steel-belted radial snow tire, so when your neighborhood streets turn against you, you'll have a tire that can help stop you and get you started again. Thanks to a radial design, two steel belts, and a snow-biting tread. Because in the battle against winter, you need all the help you can get. The Sears steel-belted radial snow tire, only at Sears. Another new football game with 8.31 remaining in the third quarter. Dallas coming back to tie it up 24 to 24. Tony Frisch set to kick off. Deep Charles Thomas, number 49. Jeff Kinney, number 31. Roger Staubach having a super night. 11 of 19, 155 yards, two touchdowns. Thomas, that is 11. And Thomas roars out to the 38-yard line. A 26-yard return. Let's look at the touchdown a moment ago. They had been running Preston Pearson. This time the play-action fake. You'll see the completion. You'll see Kerry Reardon pull up. He appeared to have damaged his knee. Let's look at it again. Golden Richards coming all the way across the field. A great way to beat his own defense. Now you'll see Reardon pull up. And he was assisted from the field. 47-yard touchdown. Straw back to Richards. First and 10 for Kansas City. Podolak, and he'll be smothered at the 35. Leroy Jordan was there. Ed Jones. Charlie Waters. There's Reardon on the sidelines. He'll be replaced by Jimmy Marsalis. Clock ticking away inside eight minutes of the third quarter. Dallas fighting to get a piece of first place in the Eastern Division of the NFC. And in their six remaining games, they only play two teams that are over 500. Going out to MacArthur Lane. He holds on for a gain of about two yards. Up to the 39. Third down and nine. Frank, you can tell when a, when a quarterback gains some experience, and that's that idea of being able to dump it out to that halfback. Most rookies and two- or three-year men, if they, if they really don't know what they're doing, they look one foot forward. The prime receiver never gets the ball out to a back, and that's, that's a sign of an experienced quarterback. I think Livingston's doing a job right now. Pressure on the offensive line for Kansas City. Dallas knows he has to pass. But here they come. And Livingston picked the place where he could put the ball without having it picked off. And the entire front four was in there on him along with linebacker D.D. Lewis. And the Dallas crowd wants a call for intentional grounding, which they will not get. For the second straight time in this quarter, Kansas City has not been able to control the ball. A marked departure from their play in the second quarter and even limitedly in the first quarter. Darrell Wilson, number 44, veteran punter for Kansas City. There's Golden Richards having a spectacular night. Beautiful, booming punt by Wilson, driving Richards all the way back, bounding into the end zone, touchback, and Wilson really got into that, a 60-yarder. 
It's tied at 24 here in Texas. We'll be back in just a moment. How does it feel like a Mustang too? How does it feel like a Mustang too? How does it feel like you're some kind of hero? Star Mustang too. MPG, Kia, Hardtop, 2 Plus 2, Stallion, and Cobra 2. The exciting Mustang 2s for 76 at your Ford dealer. I'm Walt Garrison, and I don't smoke, but I still enjoy tobacco, smokeless tobacco, like Skull here. Just a pinch between my cheek and gum, and I get full tobacco pleasure. And since I don't light up, I can use it doing almost anything. So go smokeless with Skoll, Copenhagen, and Happy Days Men. The tobacco you don't have to smoke to enjoy. Go! Next Monday night, we'll be in Cincinnati, the Cincinnati Bengals, tied for first with Pittsburgh in the third division of the AFC. The Buffalo Bills with O.J. Simpson fighting for their lives in the AFC's Eastern Division. Right now, the Dallas Cowboys have tied it up at 24. They have a first and 10 from their own 20. This is Staubach going with the big one. Fugit is down there. What on earth? Just could not get to it. I'll tell you, Staubach has decided he can beat that secondary. He's going right to work, just as he did on the last sequence of downs, leading to the Golden Ridges touchdown. I think he's a, he's, he's a little teed off right now. I think Fugger could have had that ball. He kind of let up on that last second. He did. Or so it appeared. That was Gene Fugit at the flanker spot. Had that been Pearson, it might have been a different story. Pearson with a little more speed. And, of course, Staubach immediately went over to the area where Kerry Reardon had vacated because of the injury. Jimmy Marsalis is now in there, number 40, a veteran defender, but not the defender that Reardon is. Second down and 10. Staubach gets the screen off in the general direction of Newhouse, but he had to hurry. He was being pressured by big John Matuzak. Matuzak showing well tonight. Let's look at him again. There he is working against Rayfield Wright, and you don't run over Rayfield Wright that often. Rayfield, an all pro offensive tackle. <laughs> well, Roger <laughs> had a taste of that. Give him a little thump, and down he goes. It was you a made a point. Thump. I think it was you just made a point by uh, about number 40, Jimmy Marsalis. And Alex made an excellent point earlier in the game. When he came up, he was big on the bump and run. Smothered the Gene Washington, then starring with Minnesota in the Super Bowl game. But the bump and run became a washed up commodity after a time. Also illegal. On third and ten. Staubach going again, looking for Pearson, and Staubach really got rippled again. Under a lot of pressure, Kansas City coming to life with a makeshift defensive front four. The number one quarterback rusher, Wilbur Young, out of the game, sitting on the sidelines of street clothes. Well, now we'll see if Kansas City, having contained Dallas, can reassert its own strength, develop some momentum. Twice they've had the ball in the third quarter. Twice they've not been able to move. Mitch Hoops. The punt, three men deep for the Chiefs. There they are. Podolak, 14. Thomas, 49. Reardon, 15. Well, Reardon is out. Beautiful punt by Hoops. Charlie Thomas at his own 32. Thomas got the picket line. That little fella is a good kick runner. He's been giving them fits all night, except for that one fumble which set up Staubach's dash for the first Dallas touchdown. He's had a big night. 48-yard punt, 21-yard return by Thomas. Kansas City. Good field position again. And down on the field, another Kansas City Chief. Back at the 35-yard line being attempted to there by the trainers for the Chiefs in their position. 6.48 remaining in the third quarter. It's tied at 24. It will return. Someday, about 2,200 pounds from now and half a dozen feet taller, 
this little fella might follow the hoofsteps of his father, a member of the Big Hitch, the team of champion Clydesdales that symbolize the King of Fears, symbolize a tradition, a promise, a dedication that can be summed up in one word, pride. Maybe that's why, when you say Budweiser, you've said it all. This was a pretty good year for me. Won a couple of major tournaments, and this has something to do with it. The head Arthur Ashe Competition 2. I use it, and you can buy this very same racket at fine shops everywhere. It wouldn't have my name on it if I didn't think it could help your game. And one more important thing. AMF puts its name on the line, too, and that name adds even more value to the head comp, too. AMF brings out the best in you. Kansas City with good field position. They have a first and 10 at Dallas's 47-yard line. Jeff Kinney, number 31, is in at fullback. He's in there with Ed Podolak, number 14. This is Podolak. And Podolak hangs on, keeps his feet inside the 30, down to the 34, 36-yard line. You talk about determination and balance. That kid has it. Well, uh, not only enough that time, he looked like he had some great speed. He exploded through there. Watch him, on. He really accelerates on this. I don't think he's that quick. Oh, no. Oh, you know why? I uh, that's Jeff Kenny. That's Jeff Kenny is right. I was going to say he looked a little faster than Polak. Good run. Jeff Kenny seeing his first offensive action tonight. Former All-American out of Nebraska. Kansas City with another first down at the 26-yard line. Kenny again over the. Right side, and Dave Edwards, number 52, the linebacker on the strong side, made the stop. He made the stop. Jordan tumbled the interference. It was a good play by the linebacking court. There's little Thomas. The fellow's played. He's got a cramp in his leg, apparently, but as we noted, he's played the Cowboys all night with his kick running. Mike Ed Jones out of Tennessee State. Second down and 10. Livingston, pass intended Badly for Brunson. Thrown. It'll be third down. Larry Brunson failed in two previous trials with other National Football League teams, was back managing a clothing store in Colorado, saw a highlight film of the Chiefs, decided he could make the team. Wrote Hank Scram, who was coaching the Chiefs at the time, reported in, made the club a pleasant surprise. Missing from the Chiefs all night, the most familiar name and number of all. 89, Otis Taylor, superb wide receiver when in his prime, on the injured list, out this year. Large crowd tonight, close to capacity, 65,000. Third down and 10. Livingston will get the pressure. And the pass intended for Brunson and Charlie Waters with a leaping defensive save for Dallas. And out onto the field comes Darrell Wilson. He's already kicked one tonight from 51 yards. Interesting game. We've had six turnovers, no interceptions. They have all been fumbles, three by each team. This will be a field goal somewhere around 43 yards. Stinnerud having a great year, eight for eight. And included in those eight consecutive kicks have been five field goals of over 45 yards. 44-yard attempt. It's good. Jan Sinnerud hits again from 44 yards. Award-winning Wide World of Sports coming up Saturday. Let's look and listen. Next Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports from Louisville, Kentucky, you'll see the Motorcycle Race of Champions, a special invitational event. Then from London, Olga Korbin and her Soviet teammate Ludmila Tudosheva compete against a top international field in the World Cup of Gymnastics. And from Jackson, New Jersey, the World Target Diving Championship, where an 80-foot platform demands courage and accuracy in equal parts. That's next Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports. 
I can, I got Beauty at Texas Stadium. And the Dallas Cowboys having a tough time with the fired up Kansas City Chiefs. They now trail 27 to 24. John Sinnerud has just hit from 44 yards out. He opened the scoring a long time ago tonight with a 51 yarder. Deep, Preston Pearson, number 26, and Duck Dennison, number 21. Dennison. And Dennison out over the 25 to the 27. And we'll see what happens next. 503 left in the third quarter. A Ooh. seesaw game. Lots of mistakes. I think she was doing that for you, Frank. I don't know. She was very effective. Did you like that, Frank? I did like that. <laughs> Little weak. Dallas from their own 27 yard line. Pearson 26, Newhouse 44, the setbacks. The old option play, and obviously Staubach not too familiar with it. A flag goes down. Uh, that's something, Frank, I don't understand. I don't know no, why they try either. to run option yeah. plays. They don't do that much in practice. And they come out here in the game and try to do it. As you, as you can see, it looks very clumsy. Newhouse, shake it up. Robert Newhouse, number 44. A flag is down. And penalty being assessed against Kansas City. And Robert Newhouse got up and went back to the turf. He appears to be injured. He's holding his left, left knee. knee. Let's look again. The old option play. And Staubach not quite sure what to do with it. Here's Newhouse. Emmett Thomas comes up. It's Newhouse. Did you see the uh, infraction there? Yeah, in the I corner did. of your yeah. picture, Alex? A little pushing off of there. In yes, the indeed. And now Newhouse being attended to. Cowboys leading rusher coming into tonight. He had 436 yards and he goes out with 56 yards. Well he's not out yet. Yes he's out. I don't know yesterday watching the games I saw an awful lot of injuries happening. I don't know what what the problem is. Maybe it's the midseason guys are a little more tired than they usually are. Muscles start to snap. I don't know what it is but it always seems like in the middle of the season we get a lot of people injured. You know how gets our ovation for the crowd here. 457 remaining in the third quarter. The Chiefs over the Cowboys 27 24. First and 10 Dallas from their own 42. Charles Young, Young out to the 45 yard line, hit there by Jim Lynch. Was interesting on that play, Giffer, watching Jimmy Marcel as 40 playing head to head on the line against 88 Drew Pierce. It was as if it was back in 1970, and he bumped him immediately at the line. Pearson broke past him. If he keeps that tactic against Pearson, he's going to pay the piper. Second down and seven. Marcellus, of course, at the left corner for Kansas City, replacing the injured Curry Reardon. Pearson looking for the cutback and finding it and moving into Kansas City territory, close to a first down. I'm advised that Newhouse has a bruised nerve, which they are treating right now. Hopefully he'll be back. He executed two excellent runs in the first half. Guard mark is being brought in for the measurement. And Pearson with a little second effort gets the Dallas Cowboy first down. What a seesaw game we've had. Well, and both offensive ball clubs are, are looking terrific tonight. They're running the ball well, and they're executing well, and they're throwing a pass when they have to, so they're mixing it up pretty good. That's the reason you have a big score tonight, 27-24. That's true, but I suspect that Dallas is now wearing down that Kansas City defense. 15 first downs for each team. 
Dallas at the 48-yard line of Kansas City. Pearson again. Bounces off the tackle of Billy Lanier. Hits a couple of yards. It'll be second down and eight. Clock ticking away. 3.30 and moving. Remaining in the third quarter. Game has been tied on three different occasions. Kansas City opened the scoring with a Stinner Road field goal from 51 yards out. Stinner Road put them ahead again here in the third quarter with a 44 yarder. One second down and eight. Charles Young gets away from Willie Lanier but is dropped immediately short of the first down at the 42 yard line. It'll be third down and four. And Charles Young now looking off to the sidelines. Scott Laidlaw, the rookie from Stanford, comes in now. Third down and four, the ball at the 42. Clock ticking away here in the third quarter. Seesaw game, saw back, looking. Over the middle, and Gene Fugit holds on. Cowboy first down at the 26-yard line of Kansas City. Staubach having another big night. You get wide open on that play, Alex. Well, and, and of course, it's a, it takes an awful lot of, of time for that pass to develop, and they're not getting a, that great pass rush right now. So if I was if I was Wigan, what I'd do right now is i start to blitz my linebackers. I'd put two or three linebackers in on that quarterback. They're certainly not getting that big of a rush in that front four, so I'd have to mix it up. I think Dallas is doing it. Why can't Kansas City do it? I'd do it. That play has been open all night for Dallas. And it's a, it's, a, it's a very long, tough, developing, slow play to develop. Kansas City in their zone defense trying to cover with linebackers underneath. Defensive backs deep. Sawback. There comes out. the linebacker. And there's the blitz. And look at the screen all the way across the field. The flag is down. Flag is down as Laidlaw gets down to the one-yard line. But a flag is down. And Roger Sawback was got down. Racked. He threw the ball all the way across the field. Laidlaw, the rookie from Stanford, went down to the one. Let's look at it again. He jumps up in the air, and he is buried yeah, by Jimmy, John Matuzak. Jimmy Lynch uh, uh, was the red dogger on the right side that time that came in from the linebacker spot and almost knocked him down. Watch Lynch. Now, this is what we're talking about. When you don't have that front four really rushing, you've got to send linebackers in. Uh, right now, unfortunately, they threw back to his side, but... Another second, he'd have been there, and look what they did to him. The Tuzak, number 79, knocked him down. Staubach, again, however, is all right. He's back onto the field. He is some gutsy quarterback, and you call that one beautifully, Alex. I can, I can still coach in the National Football League, Howard. <laughs> if you'd be the general manager, you'd pay the guys enough money, I wouldn't have any problems. Staubach now, 14 of 29, 203 yards, two touchdowns. First and goal, the Cowboys inside the one. Staubach does it himself. He really did. He, he made that whole drive work. Beautiful piece of quarterbacking by Roger Staubach on the entire drive. And again, the lead has changed hands. We have had 57 points scored in this game. 129 remaining in the third quarter. Saw back, shaken up, came right back, came with the quarterback sneak, but a resilient ball player. Tony Frisch. Cowboys out in front, 31 to 27. Big boy, my name is not my West. My name is Marilyn Michaels, but I'll be appearing this week with Howard Cosell on Saturday Night Live. And I'll also be Dana Shaw, Barbara Streisand, and a lot of other people that Howard couldn't afford. Mm. Hello, you sexy man. 
That's this Saturday night, live at 8, 7 Central on ABC. Why don't you come up and see us sometime? Mm. They love me in Dallas. And I think they probably do. They've had a lot of fun with Howard. Howard's had a lot of fun with him. What a football game. 58 points scored in this game. The Cowboys out in front of the Chiefs now 31-27. Fritz to kick off deep. Thomas and Kenny. Thomas. And this time Thomas is brought down by Scott Laidlaw who took the Cowboys on that long screen pass down to the one. The rookie from Stanford. Kansas City will begin operation on their own 26 yard line. Starback having a tremendous night. He's 14 and 25, 203 yards, two touchdowns, and two touchdowns rushing. One from nine yards out, the other on a quarterback sneak. You just saw it. And that defensive front four really has to tighten up now. They can't allow them to run against them like they have been. 31 is Kinney, 14 is Podolak. Going for Podolak and Livingston rushed by B.D. Lewis. Blitzing for the Cowboys. Overthrows. I suggested earlier that Kansas City seemed to be wearing down. Dallas with a minute 16 left to go in the third quarter has gotten 14 points in this quarter to three for Kansas City. They've taken the lead in the ball game and they seem to be assuming control of the game. It is a stronger squad without question. Second down. Ball at the 26 yard line. Mike Livingston playing in front of his hometown crowd. He went to high school here. He went to SMU. And unleashing a bomb that's just off the fingertips of number 88, Walter White, the rookie from Maryland. Back there covering number 31, Benny Barnes. It'll be third and 10. Well, he, Livingston isn't doing what he was doing earlier. Naturally, uh, he was running the ball with authority, and now he's given it up. He started to throw two passes in a row, and uh, no I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe they are tiring. Maybe they can't. Well, there's certainly that no game. need to panic, Alex. You're in the third quarter. You trail by four, and the suggestion that Dallas is the strongest squad doesn't mean Kansas City still can't pull off an upset. But they're not going to do it with that kind of play. That's Henderson, Tommy Henderson, Tommy that, Henderson out of Langston being attended to on the sidelines. He is some prospect that Henderson. He took a handoff from a teammate on a kick run and went for a touchdown earlier this year. One yep. third down and ten. Good protection and it goes to Billy Masters and Billy Masters depending upon where they mark it I believe has the first down. Randy Hughes defending for Dallas. First down, Kansas City, and the remarkable part of that play, it looked quite simple, but you knew that Dallas was anticipating pass. You knew they were going to come with that burly front four or linebackers, and yet Livingston had all the time in the world. Your point's the essential one, Alex. They've got to keep that ground game work. Oh, yeah. Ball at the 37-yard line, first and 10 for Kansas City. Again, a lot of time. Barry Pearson. And Pearson is down to the 36-yard line. Kansas City rolling along with good protection again for Livingston. He won't listen to us. Alex is disgusted. <laughs> he didn't want the long game with the pass. Let's look at Pearson again. Coming across in a similar fashion. And Golden Richards caught a touchdown pass a few moments ago. He was wide open, splitting the zone behind the linebackers in front of the deep men. Seconds ticking off the third quarter. Cowboys out in front of the Chiefs, 31 27. This will be the last play of the third quarter. Livingston over the middle and again. This time it's Brunson. And no, they are ruling it incomplete. Cliff Harris was defending. Time has ticked off in the third quarter. Pass rule incomplete. And there is the gun. Paul Wigan wants to know why. I don't blame him. We'll return to Texas Stadium and the bedlam of tonight's game between Dallas and Kansas City after this.
See the ABC News with Harry Reasoner weeknights on ABC. I gotta mention. Oh, this is the kid we signed for. These are the six Dallas area champions of the Four Dealers of America NFL punt, pass, and kick competition. They've just pre presented their trophies by Mr. Lee Jarman, the Four Dealer Council, and Mr. Sam Jones, the Dallas District Manager. The eight-year-old winner, we signed an autograph for him, Howard, earlier this evening, number 65, Norman Shaver. Now the nine-year-old winner, he's number 51, that's Randall Post Oak. The 10-year-old winner is number 32, Scott David Church. The 11-year-old champion, Dwayne Friesen. There he is, wearing the number made famous by Bob Lilly. Our 12-year-old winner, Jeff Sider. He's number 12. And our 13-year-old champion, Gary Shornick from Duncan, Oklahoma. See, you can play football Wayne wearing We brought him luck, Frank. Alex. Frank and I signed for two of those kids, Dwayne Friesen and Norman Shaver. The cute little guys. Second down and 10. Kansas City. Trailing but moving. Livingston. Pass intended for Pearson. Overthrown. Good protection. D.D. Lewis was back there. And Benny Barnes. I'd like to see that last call before the end of the quarter. I still think that was a completed pass. Alex, let's look, let's look at it. Of course, it's a discretion call by the referee, <laughs> as we all know. But First, this Larry Brunson, this was the last play. I think without quarter a doubt, ended. that's that's a completion. He doesn't even get rid of the ball until he gets down to the bottom, and, and that's over three seconds. I agree with you. Maybe they didn't complain too much because it would have been Dallas possession. Newhouse getting treatment on his left knee on the sidelines. But he entered the third quarter. It's third down and ten. Livingston, a lot of pressure. A flag goes down. Pass intended for Kenny. But Alex was calling for the blitz in the part of Kansas City. And Dallas is giving it to them. D.D. Lewis came again that time. Penalty now will go against Kansas City. Sure. They're out of field goal range now. Incredible amount of scoring this evening. The game has been tied up once, twice, three times. Well, they're both throwing a little longer patterns, Frank and Howard, than they were earlier. And so consequently, when you know that, you can throw your linebackers in there because they don't have to do too much. Well, they, they declined the penalty, Alex, and, and so Wiggins sent Stenerud in because while it'll be a terrific kick... It'll never happen, Howard. Jan can do it. What is he, 9 for 9, Frank? He'll be I'll 9 for you, 10. They have a lot this. of faith in him because they have let him try from 67 yards this year, 55 yards. And... Those are the different this shoes be, they wear on this turf, Gip. This will be a 53-yard attempt. Lenny Dawson is holding. And what you really worry on these long attempts is that it will be blocked because the trajectory has to be flat. And Cliff Harris got in there. I don't know whether they got a finger on it or not. I don't believe so. But Stenerud, with that peripheral vision, hurried the kick far short and off. We'll be back in Dallas right after this. Can a 1976 Ford Granada match the smoothness and quiet of a $12,000 car? You're about to see two of a series of test track comparisons between a new Cadillac Seville, a new Mercedes-Benz 280, and a new Ford Granada at various speeds and surface conditions. Here, interior sound levels were recorded on the DVA scale at about 55 miles per hour. In all tests, the Granada actually rode a bit quieter than Mercedes. Seville was slightly quieter. In one of the tests for smoothness, each car was driven over irregularly spaced boards at speeds of 20, 30, and 40 miles per hour. Inside, a vibration recorder took extra sensitive readings. In all the tests, the Granada consistently ranked first or second. Ford Granada's base sticker price? Under $4,000, excluding taxes, title, and destination charges. The closer you look, the better we look at your local Ford dealer. Next Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports, you'll see the motorcycle race of champions, then Olga Corbett in the World Cup of Gymnastics, and the World Target Diving Championship here on ABC. 14-45 remaining in the fourth quarter, Texas Stadium in 
Irving, Texas. He's hot just broken. outside of Dallas. Only he's made nine out of ten. Looks like Cyrano de Brogiac. Hey, some kicker. I don't know the relevancy. But... <laughs> Dallas leading by four. First and ten, their own 36. Charles Young. Young moves into Kansas territory. Taken out of bounds by Emmett Thomas. Charles Young, the first round draft pick of the Cowboys last year out of North Carolina State. He's a good looking, tough runner. Face mask against Kansas City. A little bit of everything on the football menu tonight. Well, the squad power, as we look at the statistics, 177 to 172, rushing the big differential, the superior passing of Staubach. And the superior squad power of Dallas now appears to be wearing down Kansas City, as we observed in the third quarter. Dallas now first and 10. They're at Kansas City's 41-yard line. Roger Staubach having a tremendous night. 14 of 25, he's thrown for two, he's run for two. This is Preston Pearson. Pearson gets a couple, it'll be second down and eight, another flag goes down. I think Bobby Maddox is going to get called for just punching somebody out there. He threw the last one, he got, he got hit first. They always catch the last guy. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Oh, they call both of them, both right? Teams. That's peripheral vision. You know that, don't you, Frank? What kind of vision? Peripheral. 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 That's a new word. There's Mike Livingston. And Ed Podolak has a couple of really fine-looking beards. I never could say that word. <laughs> Ski with Podolak is really interesting. He gets ice in it. <laughs> it freezes up on him. He has a lot of fun skiing, but he's constantly chipping the ice off. Second down and eight. Ball up to 39. Sawback with a lot of time. Gets it off to Young. Young drops the football and picked up on the first hop by Sensabaugh. And then he loses it, and Lynch comes up with it. What a game. I don't believe these Dallas fumbles tonight. Four by Dallas, three by Kansas City. And still over 14 minutes remaining. Look at it again. Young had the first down, just forgot something, the football. Sitsabaugh picked it up. He gets nailed by Nye. He drops it and Lynch recovers. So Kansas City will move from their own 30. Dallas has four fumbles, Kansas City three. It's 43, folks. Jeff Kenny and Kenny nail just over the line of scrimmage by Benny Barnes. They couldn't move Gregory out either, number 77. Give Kenny about a yard. It'll be second down and nine. There's Sensabaugh. He'd have to be careful skiing too. Fine little football player. Came up and replaced the unreplaceable Kansas City a few years ago when he took over Johnny Robinson's spot at that free safety. On second down, Livingston. It's a free ball. No, it's being ruled incomplete. Uh, his arm was going forward. Arm right. was in motion. If we look at it again, it'll prove it. Not there was hesitation, and the official did not call an incompletion. Well, too tall took an inside rush on that time, and of course, attack, he caught the tackle by surprise and is quick enough to come all the way around and get him. No time. question. That arm was in motion. Jethro Pugh covered the fumble, but his rule incomplete. Third down and nine. And now, Mike Livingston, you know what he's thinking. 
I'm going to have a lot of company back here with me. The big boys are in there. Livingston with good protection, but no receivers. And trying to go to Brunson, scrambling around, Livingston came up with the receiver, but it's incomplete, and Kansas City will have to punt. Well, that was another of those cliche-ish big plays. We still have 14 minutes left in the game. Kansas City could not move the football after the big break of the turnover. Livingston has only completed two of his last 12, but the key thing is he has not hurt Kansas City, not thrown the interception. And Kansas City well within the game. There's Golden Richards awaiting the punt of Daryl Wilson. And Wilson gets off a of beauty. Richards at his own 30. Richards out of bounds at the 47. Dallas 31, Kansas City 27. We'll return in just a moment. I could kick myself. I knew I needed a new battery. Don't wait until it's too late. Right now you can save $10 on a Sears 48. I knew it. I knew that battery was ready to go. Don't wait. Sears 48 is loaded with starting power. Now on sale nationwide for $27.95. Yep, Mike's told me how to get a new battery. Don't wait. Sears 48 sale ends Saturday. Save $10 at Sears. Road Handler, the next step in steel belted radials from Sears. With wider radial design than the tire that tamed the mountains of Morocco. Road Handler, with more steel under a deeper tread than our tire that ran the granite roads of Greece. Road Handler, with better wet cornering traction than the tire that ran East Africa. Wider radial design. More steel. Road Handler, only at Sears. 13.49 remaining in the fourth quarter from Dallas, Texas. The Cowboys over the Kansas City Chiefs, 31-27, a seesaw game if you've ever seen one. We've had seven fumbles, four by Dallas, three by Kansas City, a spectacular night by Roger Staubach. The game has been tied up four times. And there is a man who puts on quite a show pursuing the quarterback, and we'll be looking at that in just a moment. But right now, Dallas with the first and 10. They're at their own 47-yard line. And Newhouse back in the game, and he fumbles the ball, the fifth Dallas fumble. Ralph Neely made the stop, but Kansas, Kansas City, City has a first down on the 40-yard line. Emmett Thomas gets the fumble. Newhouse coming off the bench had hurt his knee ball knocked out of his hands by Bob Maddox picked up there by Emmett Thomas and Kansas City is back in business five Dallas fumbles tonight Howard first and ten for Kansas City Livingston, the ball's deflected, it's up for grabs. And a flag goes down as number 83, Larry Brunson, comes up with the football. That's a completed pass. And once again, the fans aren't happy. Let's look at it again. Flag is, Gregory deflects it, I believe. No, nope, it's Jones. Joe Jones. Joel Jones. Brunson takes it he right out of the defender's hands. Right out of Leroy Jordan's hands. Look at it again. Leroy comes down with the football and Brunson just plucks it away. First and 10 for Kansas City. Inside Dallas's 25 yard line. Kansas City trailing by four. Podolak. Dave Edwards in there for Dallas to drop Podolak for a loss. I'll tell you, you see a lot of scrambling quarterbacks. How about when the poor lineman has to scramble like Jethro Pugh on this play? He's doing the dance of the sugar plum fairy, folks. Do, 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 do. 
Gets hit now. Wing go. I'm a little tired. That's the end of it, folks. Second down and 12. The ball at the 27-yard line. Kansas City battling back. Podolak hits a big hole and gets inside the 20. Stopped there by Dave Edwards. It'll be third down and four. Right now, let's pause five seconds and allow our local stations along the line to identify themselves. Twelve thirty, and the clock is moving here at Texas Stadium in Dallas. Seesaw game. The Dallas Cowboys fighting to retain a share of the lead of the National Football Conference's Eastern Division. They have their hands full with the Kansas City Chiefs. It's been back and forth. It's been tied four times. Here comes a reverse to Kenny. Good play. Beautiful. And Kenny down to the 10 yard line. Gets another Kansas City first down. Leroy Jordan finally made the stop for Dallas. Now that's a signal call, Alex. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I don't understand. And now they're running the ball again, and they're doing it real well. Yeah, but the Cowboys were stacked inside, and they moved out oh, yeah. with a double reverse. It was a beautiful call, and it was well executed. At one point, Kenny had to make the play on his own. His blocking had left him, and he got past that tackler. Now they're positioned, and then some. Billy Masters, number 84, replaces number 88. Walter White also gives Livingston the play. His first down and goal. The ball is just short of the nine-yard line of the Dallas Cowboys. Kenny. Pulling Cowboys with him down to the seven-yard line. Dave Edwards, Jethro Pugh, the defenders for Dallas. Again, that instancy of decision that faces the runner. The quick reading of the defense. He could have gone slightly to his left then and might have gone further, Alex. Right, Howard. <laughs> I he's, thought entitled. So too. <laughs> he's entitled to make decisions once in a while on his own guys you know, Kenny? we're all vulnerable you know you really don't have a whole lot of time to think about it got to do it by instinct Gip. second down and goal ball at the seven draw call goes to Kenny he's inside the five they've been studying the Chicago Bears oh, offense oh, I hope not I hope we don't see that Ball marked right on the five yard line. It'll be third and goal. Kenny now with 38 yards and six attempts. Billy Masters, number 84, brings the play in for Mike Livingston. Beautiful view of the Texas Stadium. Bill, I would say the capacity tonight, that would be 65,000. I would throw that at tight end, big Billy Masters, 84. Just let him have it. Podolak. What, what a play it. What a play it that kid is. I love it. You talk about getting the most out of yourself, even more than you've got to give. Podolak exemplifies that. He's a player. Kansas City has once again taken the lead. And they may be getting worn down, but they're fighting back. Well, they sure are fighting back. And now the question is that when they, if they score this extra point, it's going to be a three point situation. Frisch missed one last week and on very short angle. Maybe they're going to be kind of worried about even getting in the close position. They're going to have to go for a touchdown, they're thinking. Seven plays, 59 yards, climaxed with this play to Podolak, who's had a tremendous night filling in, as you would believe, for Woody Green, who ordinarily would have been the regular starting back. Jan Stenerud. So Kansas City has battled back once more. They lead the Dallas Cowboys 34 to 31. RCA introduces TV that thinks in color. The new RCA XL100 color track system. Here's what thinks in color means to you. It means an advanced new picture tube to sharpen contrast. It means automatically keeping out the colors that can spoil natural flesh tone. It means keeping the colors you like from scene to scene, from channel to channel to channel. It means keeping colors rich and vivid in bright light or dim light. It means RCA's most vivid color, most automatic system, and for reliability, the most tested TV in RCA history. The new RCA XL100 color track system. It thinks in color. 
Eddie Podolak has just put the Kansas City Chiefs ahead. Ed Podolak carried the ball 15 times tonight, 86 yards, caught three for 26. There are the Dallas return men, Preston Pearson, 26, Doug Dennison, 21. They await the kick of Jan Stinnerud. There's Eddie. Pinocchio's done a great job tonight, hasn't he, Frank? <laughs> Dennison at his six yard line. And Dennison out over the 25 yard line. 19 yard return. Doug is now concentrating on holding on to that football. You could see him. The hole opened up and he went in with that ball clutched to the chest. He's had two critical fumbles tonight. The Cowboys five and all. That's why they're trailing right now with 9.58 to go. That's the way the points. ball bounces sometimes. Sometimes, isn't it? From their own 26, Robert Newhouse back in the ball game, shaken up in the third quarter. He was the one who fumbled a few moments ago. Set up the Kansas City touchdown. Play action fake. This is Preston Pearson. Pearson lunging towards that first down marker hit by Ken Avery, number 53. And Pearson gets the first down. The guy who was on it here tonight, Giff, was a member of the all-time Texas team who's rooting urgently for the Cowboys. He's number 63, Gene Upshaw of the Oakland Raiders. His team has a two-game edge on Kansas City in the standings. It's not enough for him. He wants more. And they were defeated 42-10 to 10 earlier. They'll play Kansas City in the final game of both of their seasons. Here's Preston Pearson on the first down, and Lynch is there and you know we don't haven't said much about Jim Lynch and people don't but he is one of the steady players in the pro game today former Notre Damer great player captain Notre Dame one of the uh, athlete scholars of his year and you're right steady well he played with some players too at Notre Dame Alan Page Nick Eddy Terry Hanready well there were a bunch of them we beat them all at Iowa, Iowa. We beat Rocky Blyer Kuchenberg Pat Duranko they were national champions, I might add. Second down and eight. Ball at the 37 of Dallas. Starback. Newhouse is all alone. Newhouse at midfield. Dallas first down at the 47-yard line of Kansas City. Jim Kearney made the stop. Dawson is really... Dawson. Starback is really picking them apart. I was looking at Lenny, aged as he has become on the... Kansas City bench. You know, this is kind of funny. Paul Wigan was just being warned by the officials to keep his players off the football field. Yeah, they have the enthusiasm of a high school team. And now they're being told to stay back in the proportioned area. All right, Dallas with the first and ten. Ball just inside the 48 of Kansas City. Pearson inside handoff. Pearson diving forward inside the 45. Willie Lanier made the stop. It'll be second down and six. In your vernacular, Giffer, Pearson has been squirting out yardage all night. He's had it on both teams tonight. Eddie Podolak is the bad squirter. Squirmer. Second and six. Ball at the 43 of Kansas City. 8.05 remaining in the game. The Cowboys are trailing the Chiefs 31 to 34. Newhouse. And a fired up Kansas City defense. Hales Newhouse at the line of scrimmage. Bob Maddox, who is playing out of position. Number 75, Bob Maddox, would ordinarily be inside. He's gone outside. Keating has moved to the inside. Buck Buchanan has a sore foot. He's playing the right tackle. Sort of a makeshift defensive front four for Kansas City, but getting the job done. I sit next to Alex. I look admiringly at a truly great young actress. Superb performance in Bay, which she played. Susan Clark has just popped into our booth. On the third down, the setbacks. Young, 30. Pearson, 26. Starback back. A flag goes down. And Starback goes down. John Matuzic. Matuzic playing fine football game tonight. You're right. We had a long talk with Paul Wiggins today about Matuzak. He pulled no punches. The young man has had a controversial background, off criticized, as Alex touched upon earlier. Also, he was playing on the inside, the tackle position. Wiggins says his real position is on the outside. He moved him there. He said he's got much to learn. 
He hasn't shown us an awful lot thus far this year except for one thing. There can now be no question. The young man is trying. He's giving everything he's got on every play. And I think he's manifested that tonight. Mitch Hoops on fourth down will punt for Dallas. Deep at Podolak, Charles Thomas and Reggie Craig. Ricky from Arkansas. Hoops gets it away. High kick, a good kick. The fair catch is called for. Then the ball is allowed to bound towards the goal line. Hit there by Mark Washington and knocked backwards and <laughs> filled it in a rather dangerous way by Ed Bodelak. We've seen everything in this game, Alex. We sure have, and the, the score indicates it, 34 to 31, and uh, we still have, what, 6.57 to go. 57-yard putt. And what a great time to come up with that kick because Kansas City is in a terrible field situation. Must exercise some degree of ball control. Otherwise, Dallas will get good field position, and with Starback pitching the way he is, Big play by Mark Washington for Dallas. Puts Kansas City in the hole. Kansas City, first and ten from their own seven. Bobbled the ball. Livingston gets back on top of back. it. Boy, the ball is like a hot brick tonight. Well, Nobody you know, can you hold know what it. Susan Clark said? Susan Clark said it's because they don't have dirt out there that they can't rub their hands and get the perspiration off their hands. I don't know if there's any truth to that. That's as good a theory as any other. There's Matuzak, and he has played a fine football game. The first player picked in the draft in 1973. Had trouble with management at Houston. Traded to Kansas City for Curly Cope. Cope is doing the same job with Houston that Matuzak is doing with Kansas City. Superb. On second down, a flag goes as MacArthur Lane is stacked up. Motion, Kansas City. Hey, Motion against Kansas City. Declined by Dallas. It'll be third down and ten. There's going to be some pressure put on this guy right here, Gerald Wilson, number 44. Of course, he's a good punter, and let's see how he does out of the end zone. I don't think anybody is steadier, better than Gerald Wilson, and the figures over the past how many years prove it. On third down, Livingston sitting on a three-point lead. 6-17 remaining in the fourth quarter. He's very careful. This is Podolak. Podolak is thrown all the way back to the three-yard line. Charlie Waters came up and got a lot of help in pursuit from the Dallas front four. So now, Darrell Wilson will be punting, and the problem that he is confronted with now, he will not be able to really to kick from a spread formation. And he's going to be way, way back in the end zone, and I don't know whether I'd try to block it or not. I sure, I think I'd rush an awful lot and try to scare him a little bit to see if he'd get off a bad one, but I think I'd stay away from that punter, and I'm sure they're going to do that. He's way back there. Notice, though, you do not have any men going down under it. They'll have to make sure it's not blocked first. So the two outside men have moved in for blocking. There'll be a run back here. This will be Golden Richards. And that a fine kick. Yes, Taking indeed. A Kansas City bounce, a 51-yarder. Dallas will take over at their own 45. We know. You feel trapped. You want to get out where freedom begins. Simple. Take off on a legend, a Harley-Davidson Freedom Machine. This one's a classic, the 1200cc Electroglide. Harley-Davidson has met quality and performance for more than 70 years. That's why AMF puts its name on the line, too. And that name adds even more value to sports products like Harley-Davidson motorcycles. AMF brings out the best in you. 521 remaining in the fourth quarter. The Chiefs over the Cowboys, 34-31. Cowboys, first and 10, their own 45. Starback, pump faking, throws one up for grabs. And is taken. Mike Sensabaugh. Sensabaugh running all over the field out to the 37. And that pass, I'm sure Roger Starback 
Bill it's, regret that was yes, not have been thrown. It slipped it, a little bit on him, Frank. Not only that, he had no vision when he threw it. A defender was all over. I was amused by Sensabaugh looking and looking and looking for blockers. Look at it again. Starback under pressure. Have to admire the courage of this Kansas City Chief. Defensive front four, Keating, Matuzak, Maddox. They've been going all night. They have nobody to back them up. They've gone the entire way. And they have just forced Staubach into an interception. First and 10, Kansas City. They're on 38, and this is Podolak, and he's hit hard by Ed Jones. Inside five minutes. This one is going to come right down to the wire. Incredible night of turnovers. Yes, and they tell the story because Dallas was wearing down Kansas City, wearing down Kansas City, but with the steadiness of turnovers, they gave Kansas City the chance to get back the lead after having overtaken the Chiefs and assumed the lead. On second down. Livingston. Complete. And it goes out to Barry Pearson. And Pearson. Very close to a... Kansas City first down. It is. Mike Livingston, not the classical, graceful quarterback, but very steady. He has not oh. hurt Kansas City tonight, and that's been the key to it. That was a gutty call, too. You know, he could just as easily try to run out the time and eat up a couple more minutes, but he went for that first down, and now they got 428 left. They got three more downs. You're right. Mike Livingston, who went to South Oak Cliff High School right here in Dallas. They don't like him right now. No. He's the enemy. Odalak. Over midfield, just short of the 49-yard line of Dallas. Thriller tonight. Next week will be in Cincinnati. Cincinnati Bengals tied with Pittsburgh in the Central Division of the AFC. They go against the Buffalo Bills. And O.J. Simpson. That's next Monday night from Cincinnati. Second down and seven. Chiefs working on the time. Get the ball to Podolak. He gets about a yard. The clock continuing to tick off the seconds. And the Chiefs out in front of the Cowboys, 34-31. We'd like to recap the scoring for you, but we don't have enough time. <laughs> That would take about an hour and 20 minutes. Just briefly, Kansas City opened it with a 51-yard field goal by Stenerud. And a whole bunch of other things happened. And Kansas City now is ahead again by the margin of a field goal. Well, they need to first down. And I don't know, this is a ticklish situation for Livingston. He can, uh, he can uh, play it cool and, uh, and run it, or maybe he can take a chance and throw it for a first down. Let's see what he does. On He's third and five. close to interference and it will be interference yes sir I didn't see much question about it it's holding on it's another gutsy call by the kid oh Ellis. yeah terrific that's the way you like it that's the way I would call it play benches oh, for absolutely let's throw that ball around hanging all over him Benny Barnes who had replaced Mel Renfro tonight had played a fine game and took a chance there and was detected interfering. Kansas City has a first and ten. They're at Dallas's 33. <laughs> MacArthur Lane and <laughs> MacArthur Lane squeezing that football. Did you see that, Frank? <laughs> sure he doesn't is. want another fumble either. I know the feeling. Cliff Harris made the stop. I don't know how Paul Wigan is doing it, and they can still lose this game. In this case, there is enough time for it to turn around. One Kansas City mistake. But for a guy to move if he wins into a 4-4 position, losing his first three games with eight of his key players on the injured reserve list, not even available, including such notable ones as Upshaw and Otis Taylor, whom I've mentioned, and Randy Beisler, is working a coaching miracle. Second down and six. The ball at the 28th of the Dallas Cowboys. Moving towards the two-minute mark. This is Jeff Kenny. Kenny gets about a yard. It'll be third down and four. And more than that, Howard, they'll move to within two games of the Oakland Raiders in their division. 
And they close out the season with the Raiders. A remarkable job by Paul Wigan, who credits so much of his experience in football to Paul Brown and his coach at Stanford, Chuck Taylor. And out comes Sinaru to warm up on the sidelines. A great year he's had. Third down now and six. Dallas calls timeout before the two minute warning. They'll get another clock stop at the two minute warning. And we'll be back in a moment. Whenever I drive, I'm glad we bought Ford's new Pinto Pony MPG. It gives me a lot of car for the money. It's got a strong unitized body, a 2.3 liter engine, and front disc brakes. It also has a safety design front end and roof structure, an energy absorbing steering column, and steel guardrails. It's a little car, but not too little, and I like that. After all, no matter how much fun it is, there's a serious side to driving. The closer you look, the better we look. Leroy Jordan, 13-year veteran of Alabama. All right! Third down, the Cowboys stop the clock. 210. I don't understand that. It's a basketball that. game. I don't know why the Dallas called timeout. They got, they got a two-minute warning timeout in 10 seconds. Well, maybe they're going to jump center. Now they're down to two timeouts. Ball is at the 29. You saw John Stinnerud warming up the sidelines. Paul Wigan, the head coach, looking on. Livingston. Fumble. His arm and let's see who they're giving the ball to. Jethro Pugh is in there. And Kansas City got the ball back, but most importantly, they are out of field goal range. John Stinneru. Well, and this sit game. back down. That's the two-minute warning. Happen. Fourth down, and Kansas City out of field goal area. We'll be back. You are paying for a tune-up, whether you get one or not. Three out of five cars on the road today need a tune-up. And depending on tank size, most are wasting one to two gallons of gasoline every tank full. That's money down the drain. Solution, a tune-up with champion spark plugs. A tune-up can help save gasoline and give you better starts all winter long. Start saving one to two gallons every tank full. Just say fill her up with champions. This is the tire we ran on top roads around the world. And here's the next step in steel belted radials from Sears. Road Handler. With wider radial design than the tire that tamed the mountains of Morocco. Road Handler. With more steel guts than the tire that beat the Baja. Road Handler. With better wet cornering traction than the tire that ran East Africa. Wider radial design, more steel. Road Handler, only at Sears. A moment ago, Kansas City was in good field goal range for Jan Stinnerud. Mike Livingston on third down and five went back with this pass. D.D. Lewis blitzing from his linebacker position. Knocked the ball loose. Jethro Pugh, number 75, missed it. Jeff Kenny recovered for Kansas City. But he recovered all the way back at the 47-yard line and out of field goal range. And will you please she's the only off one, our screen? She's the only one that isn't confused. <laughs> she hasn't looked at she's the game. She's just lobbing right along, man. She's I found, mean, every, she, she found well, every camera we have at the stadium. Frank, <laughs> Frank, you think Wiggins sent that play in? He's been calling them every, every right. play, so I assume that I, he did. I just don't understand. Well, he has a lot of confidence. Livingston uh, has had a good night. And he does have a lot of confidence in his quarterback. Tom Landry pacing the sidelines. 155 showing on the clock. Gerald Wilson. Single safety for Dallas, Golden Richards, but you can bet the Cowboys are going for the block. And Wilson goes for the sidelines. Oh. And he finds it again. What a kicker. 
What a night he has had. Earlier, he put one out on the four-yard line. This one is marked at the five, and it covers 49 yards. 148 remaining on the clock. Well, now Roger has to do his patented specialty, his two-minute drill. Get down there in field goal range so we can keep Alex here for overtime. Maybe even break one. Starback after a conference with Tom Landry into the ball game. Whale of a night, with the exception of the one interception of a pass that should not have been thrown. Starback is 17 of 29, 232 yards, two touchdown passes, two touchdown that he provided for the Cowboys with on the ground. Starback, Preston Pearson, and Pearson. Gets the football out where Sawback can breathe a little. Jim Lynch makes a stop. Dallas first down. The hurry up offense. Two plays have been called in the huddle. This will be a pass. Either intended to kill the clock or if he gets the receiver open, he'll go for the completion. That's your basic clock killer. <laughs> <laughs> and it stops the clock at 114. There's our man, Gerald Wilson. As we said, what a night he's had. A 44 yarder to match his number, a 51 yarder. And that's been the difference. <laughs> but the real <laughs> solid oh, difference big is. Big gap in that smile. <laughs> really I been the. I bet he's corn funny. <laughs> They've been the courage of this Kansas City team. They have only only have four defensive linemen. I think Alex put it best in the first quarter, or maybe the second. They reflect the character of that coach. Second down and ten. The ball at the 17. It's not over. Ball back. Goes out to Young and Young. Well, I don't know whether he intended to, but he got out of bounds after Jim Kearney laid one on him. Well, he laid one on him, too. First down, Dallas. In at six to go. Two timeouts remaining for Dallas. Well, Howard, the pressure could really come down to Tony Frisch again, and you know what he did last week. He missed one from really close in, so uh, I know he's thinking about it right now. Of course, I think Dallas is thinking about it, too. They'd, they'd rather have that score, that big score. The man who has really been bottled up tonight is Dallas's best receiver, Drew Pearson, number 88. And over the past three years, he's provided a lot of thrills in the closing minutes of Dallas football games. Inside handoff to Charlie Young. Looked like Chuck Sutherland had returned to coach. Old single wing inside handoff. Gain of two, it'll be second down and eight. Sawback trying to conserve his timeouts. 51 seconds left and counting down. Young bobbles the ball. Willie Lanier with the interception. Look at Willie gone. And Willie's running out the clock. Lane nine made the stop. And Willie Lanier, we talked about him at the very top of the show, one of the great middle linebackers ever to play this game. He wanted to quit last year, retire, had a good position with a major company. And Paul Wigan talked him out of retirement. And he, for all intent and purposes, has just iced the football game for Kansas City. In a mistake-ridden game, Dallas out aired Kansas City. It's as simple as that. Starback on a great night, but the two interceptions have come at really key moments. Livingston will run the clock out. Dallas can stop it twice. Don't forget, next Monday night, we'll be in Cincinnati for the Cincinnati Bengals. Cincinnati, another young team, but leading their division along with Pittsburgh, the central division of the AFC. They go up against the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo, of course, now trailing Miami. Miami is 7-1 in the Eastern Division of the AFC. Buffalo 5-3. We might see a lot of touchdowns again next week, Howard. I think we will. Mentioning Miami, Shula is unbelievable. Just unbelievable. What a great coach he is. 
Buffalo was at 4-0. Then we had them on a Monday night, upset by the Giants, and their defense has gone downhill ever since. Those are the interceptions, of course, for the season. Dallas can stop it no more. This is it. I have a chance to tell you, the executive producer of NFL Monday Night Football is Rune Arledge. Coverage of tonight's game is produced by Don Olmeyer and directed by Chet Forty. Our technical director, Bill Morris, associate director, Dick Buffington. Assistant to the producer, Rick LaSavita and George Purnell. Our engineering supervisor, Dick Horan. And our unit manager, Murray Schwartz. How about Canton McKinley, Steve Buzikis, the guy who always comes up here and points out the thing. He's doing the play-by-play, -play and Canton won the other week, right? Are they state champs now? Steve Buzikis, our spotter, and statistician, Jerry Klein. 25 seconds, Dallas out of timeouts. That's what the Eastern Division will look like after this game. And George Allen can continue his salary negotiations with a little more purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully for George Allen. Now it will run out. And Kansas City stays two games behind Oakland. Big victory for Kansas City when it appeared that Dallas's superior squad strength was wearing them down. A tremendous victory for that man, Paul Wiggins. In his rookie year as a head coach, what a job he did. Giff. Once again, the final score, Kansas City 31, Dallas. Kansas City 34, Dallas 31. This is Frank Gifford, along with Howard Cosell and Alex Karras saying so long from Texas Stadium in Dallas, Texas. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United, the airline of the pros. This year, 16 of the 26 NFL teams will enjoy United's friendship charter service. The proceeding was a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. An hour of laughs Wednesday. First, there's something foul at the feast when Robin's men fall ill at Prince John's banquet on when things were rotten, Wednesday at 8, 7 central. Then Leonard turns a pussycat into a tiger when he helps Earl go courting on That's My Mama, Wednesday on ABC.